Hi, welcome to Born Under... Oh, pardon me. Down Under Punches, a very special episode in which we have moved the entire show to Australia um, so that we are only able to punch up in the show. I am your host, Nicole, and joining me today is my co-host, Kelly. Kelly, do you want to come out and do your best Australian accent? I do. I, you know what? I was all set to do the accent, and uh, I just I can't do it without the intro music. It just it's not the same. That's fair. Let's I see was, if we can. Because it was the accent was going to come at the end of you know my little dance. Which I, oh, there we go. All right. <clears throat> Uh, good day, mate. How are you going? Uh, I just uh, put on my togs so I could walk over for a drink from the bubble tap. You Wow, I, you really nailed that. I've been practicing. Yeah, I can tell. That's the slang there was pretty on point. Mm-hmm. 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 <clears throat> so... But you were telling me you... you like you were absolutely talking shit at the beginning. Like you were going to completely outclass me, uh, in the in the accent contest. Mm hmm. Um. I really only learned. I should. I. I think I oversold myself. I really only learned how to say the word walkabout. Walk. 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 Walkabout. <laughs> did I nail it? Yeah. Did I, do, about did I do my best? <laughs> um. So. The only person that I know that's from Australia is Tom Cardi. Is there anyone else that you know from Australia? I'm 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 like I'm trying to like read your lips like you're giving me like signals in a poker game. I'm trying to I'm trying to cue you to to, to cue in the guests, but oh the guests oh mm -hmm. oh we're bringing out the guests before. Do, do you want to? Oh, do you want to read the erotica? We could do the erotica first. Uh, well, you I find know it's what? nice it's to do show. erotica as a group, you know? It feels mm -hmm. like a group activity. Yeah, I feel that. Okay. Cool. Well, then let's bring out our guests, uh, Lucas and Josie from American Gothic. Er, sorry. Pardon me. <laughs> Australian Gothic. <laughs> Come on out and do your best Australian accent. Whoa, it's happening in stereo. You still have time oh. to dance. You still have time. There it is. Oh, now we're stopping? Okay. Hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Welcome to the show. That Good makes beautiful day. Australian accents. Yeah. <laughs> and truly, That's... indeed, how are you going? Yeah, <laughs> yeah not too bad. Um, because we're... Um, it's 11 a.m. and I've already had a beer, but I've realized time <laughs> is a social construct. Um, and you folks are in Canada, Canada, and um, you know what? It's okay. We can meet in the middle. What time is it there? It is 7 p.m. In the whole Lovely. country, all of Canada. All right. Yeah. It's yeah. one time zone like China. So I'm drinking on behalf of you folks. Beautiful. Except Thanks. Newfoundland. Newfoundland is still a half hour ahead. Don't ask. <laughs> Yeah, so, so do you guys um, want to? Oh, I hear there's erotica, and my auntie is like watching right now. So I think we should just get stuck into it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, this erotica was written by someone's aunt, so it's perfect. Ugh. We should just get stuck into it, much like some things that are about to happen in the piece that Kelly's about to read. Okay. Yeah, and like astute viewers will know, there was a bit of a fake out last week, where or last episode, where we were going to read the erotica, and then you know kind of weaseled out of it oh no Callus. um but that was just because um this is nicole's favorite book and i wanted her to be here for it so um but it's not me that's going to read the erotica uh, it is official cowboy of the show starch mccaller uh if you just want to play the guest music again <laughs> Damn it, I should have brought cowboy stuff. Well, <laughs> you had the chance. You did. 
did mention specifically cowboy erotica. Mm -hmm. did, did you want? Did you want to go get some cowboy stuff? No, I don't we can think stall. we have anything. We've got yet. a technical difficulty screen. Speak for yourself. The queer cowboy look is very prominent right now. So I have several bowler ties. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm nailing it, right? That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, you're doing it perfectly. So, <clears throat> I believe we'll uh, pick up where we left off last time with... Uh, Nicole, would you like to explain who these characters are? Um... Yes. I know. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've i only skipped through to the sex scenes and I don't remember any of the plot, so. <laughs> and to, to be fair to this book, there is no fucking until like halfway through. This is when it starts. Oh, okay. uh, ev everything else is plot development. I, yeah. I skimmed like hard through Okay. So I actually, if I remember correctly... It's a cowboy and his ex-wife, and they are trying to rekindle their relationship. Mm -hmm. And he is a cowboy at the Calgary Stampede, represent. Mm -hmm. um, and he is... <laughs> um, he is... Josh, get your assless chaps. Um, he is taking up a modeling job because he's going broke. Does that sound correct? Did you read the yeah. back of the book? And fast forward to where we are now, <laughs> she is currently... Uh, he is currently looking at her like he was a starving wolf and she was a juicy T-bone. So. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah. Yeah. Like a Warner Brothers happens. cartoon, yeah. but the erotica yeah, yeah. of our childhood. <laughs> Someone Perfect. looks like a big giant ham. I mm -hmm. the Just best of us. Mouth open, comically dripping with saliva. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah that's a thick ham. Okay. Here we go. His eyes were soft, but intense in the fading glow of sunset. <laughs> and she could see the huge bulge straining in his pants as he waited for her answer. His power and restraint, so beautiful and raw, words failed her. So Jenna let her hands do the talking. <laughs> Still holding his gaze, she started popping open the buttons down the front of her shirt. With each one, her breathing increased, matching the rate of each inhale. Chase pulled through his flared nostrils. <laughs> the last button slipped free and Jenna let the sides fall away. Like a magnet drawn to steel, Chase's eyes dropped and he swallowed hard. Jenna's nipples perked up higher, tingling and straining under the thin <laughs> material of a bra. Please, please, hold your applause till the end. As he slowly rubbed his hands up and down her thighs, she felt the tension build in the muscles of his where they flanked her. <laughs> On a rush of feminine power, Jenna moved to undo the clasp of her bra, but his hands came down over hers, stopping her. No, let me. Passion flat hot, <laughs> dilating his pupils as he pushed the scrap of cloth out of, the, out of his way and cupped her breasts pressing them closer together and rolling his thumbs <laughs> over the sensitized peaks. <laughs> so he's you like a 12 year old seeing boobs for the first time. You <laughs> don't know how many times I've wanted to touch you like this in the last few days. I don't know why I said 12 year old. That was bad. <laughs> yeah. Do, do we want to dwell on that for a minute? I can take <laughs> a little break from reading and then. <laughs> no, that's, that's just a steamroll right past that. Okay. We'll put a pin in that and come back to it. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> Excuse me. She'd cause the guttural quality of his voice. Relishing the thought, Jenna's nerves fired at random and her legs twitched. She wanted to drive him as senseless as he was her. So she wiggled closer and stroked his erection through the worn <laughs> denim, but it wasn't good enough. She needed oh. the naked length and weight of him pulsing in her palm. <laughs> She Jesus dove Christ. forward and feasted on her aching breast, momentarily throwing off her goal, licking and nibbling first one nipple, then the other. His silky <laughs> hair tickled her and filled her head with a mixture of cologne and heated male flesh. The opposing rough texture of his day-old beard and the moist velvet inside his mouth shut all but the most primal part of her down, 
and Jenna went after Chase's strain and zipper, as though her life depended on getting in there. Yes, he growled as he put his mouth down over hers, shifting one knee between hers and pressing in tight so she could rock against him. She pushed his jeans over his hips and dragged the front of his shorts down. His penis sprang forward, <laughs> the velvet tip leaving a trail of moisture across her belly. <laughs> no! Did he piss himself? <laughs> Does he produce slime like a slug or something like that? <laughs> Keep salt away from this man's dick. I think that's as good as a place as any to leave it. Unless the audience wants more. Um, give me like another another uh, two paragraphs, please. Yeah, yeah. You can't just All leave right. the, the slug dick. We should go to like first thrust at least, shouldn't we? Like, <laughs> all right, first first thrust it is. We do listen to our guests. <laughs> Driving his tongue past her lips, Chase plundered the inside of Jenna's mouth as she shoved at the bunched up denim, further baring his ass. Grabbing the taut cheeks, she dug in and held on as his hips pumped, rubbing against her and mirroring the thrust of his tongue. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. That. That. Yeah. I think. I think <laughs> that's the <laughs> Fucking hell! It also well, occurred to me when I said that. It's just like, down, knows- down, oh, kitties. I think it's time we all got some snooze before that desert sun comes up overhead. I think that's for the best. Fucking hell! Jesus. It's funny because, like, the only other time I stream, it's for our game of Deadlands, which is a horror western setting. So, in a way, this is perfect. I'm totally in my element. Yeah. Great work. Mm. This is my first time. It's already... I, I've had enough. <laughs> no, it's very good. It's great. No, thank you for that. That was wonderful. Yeah, mm. my pleasure. Cowboy wonderful girl. is what I'd say. Yeah, I think I'm just going to stay uh, in character and starch my collar the whole time. It's way more fun than being me. Oh. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh. Yeah, so what's next on the agenda, folks? Well... Great news on that front um, is that, um, from what I understand, and maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, this is going to be a very different episode in that we're all going to be hands off the wheel and you two are just like, just going to grab us roughly by the denim and take control. Not me being a control freak. That's very out of character for me. (laughs) Cool, you gave the two guys who will just, like, rant on for hours about shit. Like, I don't know, just feel free to, like, cut us off at any point. Yeah, seriously, please, dude. <laughs> no, we are we are beyond excited to just lay back and take it, uh, whatever you you're going to give to us. If you're here to get cut off, let me tell you, Kelly is your guy, so. <laughs> <laughs> it is. You came to the right place. No, jump in at any point if you want us to elaborate on some stupid shit or, like, or, or principally to tell us to, like, shut up about stupid shit like we are very happy to cooperate (laughs) yeah because there's like so many things like just slang or um assumed knowledge that we might be um we might cover so basically today or rather this morning (laughs) um i created a little powerpoint presentation for um shit cunts who lost their uh political seat on the weekend. We had a federal election on the weekend and uh, we have a new government, uh, which is much like the old government, but they put like a rainbow flag um, in front of all the fascist policies that they enact. Um, But there are a few people who did lose their seats and um, we take what joy we can. So I thought we might just do um, a little tiny rundown of a few of those people. Mostly, it's just like little bits of trivia that you might not get from your mainstream reporting. Um, mm-hmm. Yay! Yeah. Right. Also, so I actually, I already have a sign question because, yeah. as I understand, in uh, you know the uh, Australians Creole English that you speak, the mm-hmm. the you know the term the term cunt's like a term of endearment, right? Almost like yeah. it's. Uh, ooh, it depends. It depends on the use. I, yeah. Because I, I would assume that like. You know, everything's topsy turvy and upside down, so all the curse words are compliments. So, like, is like, you know, like a cunt is your friend, but like a shit cunt is like a really, really good person, right? Of that or dog cunt, 
that denotes that's that, the like, harshest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You dog cunt is right. like so yeah, like the best vibes. Mm. But yeah, how's and, it going, cunt? Is like you know, how's it going? in a very very casual setting, is like, hey, how's it going? Like, I'm ex. I, it's like you're so excited to be here that you can't restrain yourself. Um, and yeah, it's it's to do with the inflection. Like I'll say to so many of my friends, "Boy, you can't," and that's just like, <laughs> "Are you cheeky?" Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, but um, I guess before I get started on the presentation, um, I realized that the despite what I say about any of these people, the policies that they enact are by far the worst things about them, um, mm-hmm. and these are just sort of. Uh, peripheral things that are I find interesting or you know worthy of note but like you know all of these people support the um illegal detention of people seeking asylum um poverty is a policy choice and um so that's the most damning thing about any of them but we get our mm-hmm. laughs where we can yep also should Extremely we also relatable. point out that uh that, you know, in Australia, we kind of have a... Is it a minority government? Have they determined that yet? No. No, okay. But there is the hope that because there are a lot more, like, independent and minor party people who have seats, um, that at least, you know, the you know new government can be stopped on some of the bullshit that they're trying to port over from, like, the previous government. So, so that gives us some optimism. And also, like, also these fuckers losing their seats is just, like Josie said... Uh, a point of joy for us that we should yeah. should take like um like a starving man having crackers like because i guess for any folks that don't like know who we are like we have a podcast called australian gothic where we cover different sort of um parts of australian culture and i guess i imagine like you folks are from canada right like there are so many through lines where um you know the dark history and ongoing um colonialism uh means that there's this weird thing where you both carve out some cultural um you know there there are some some uniqueness to it but i think there's a lot of through lines in terms of um you know the horror of genocide and colonialism and so we um that's why lucas brought me onto the podcast is because i'm very good at bringing things down um to to the brim level um yeah yeah, the thesis. Thank you, Josie, for introducing the premise of our podcast. I would have forgotten to do that. Um, yeah, the <laughs> yeah. Imagine is that... if somebody else like would have forgotten to introduce who you were <laughs> when bringing you out. That would have been embarrassing. <laughs> it, it's it's laid back here. We're having a fun time. Um, but yeah, the premise of our podcast is that all Australian culture is in some way haunted uh, by you know past atrocities or you know on, the ongoing atrocity of colonialism and or present day atrocities, like, you know, the illegal detention of asylum seekers. There's, there's so many facets of Australian culture that seem like forced mirth. Like, you know, there's yeah. this like, oh, be happy, don't question it. And also because Australia is a very young colony, there is this attempt to like sort of, I don't want to say culture jam, but like force traditions into being. Yes, uh, yes, fuck it. Um, you, you may have come across uh, on the weekend a lot of Australians tweeting about like democracy sausage and a uh, friend of the show, Ben McClay, made an excellent tweet about how a lot of, you know, it feels like a lot of Australians are ty- trying to make democracy sausage our whole personality because the all that's left of the national personality is racism. So, <laughs> yeah. so we're taking these like traditions that haven't existed for very long, acting like they're extremely sacred and there's this defensiveness anytime you question any of these parts of Australian culture. Like if you... Like, if you make fun of Hey Hey, It's Saturday, which was our first episode, some people do get very upset, even though that show is extremely horrible. Like, Objectively racist. Objectively racist, sexist, like some pedophilia at one point, which we discussed in the episode. So, so yeah, it's not, it's not always going to be us shitting on Australian culture. There's stuff that we celebrate as well. The episode that dropped today is all about the show Bluey, but chiefly about uh, weird Bluey fan theories. And I kind of melted Josie's brain about that a little bit. So, so yeah, please check that out. Um, so, yeah, but most of our episodes are going to be focusing on, like, complicated or bad stuff to do with Australian culture, history, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do hope the democracy a... sausage thing doesn't take... Sorry, Nicole, I talked over you again. 
That's all right. I'll just glare at you until you stop. Um, yeah, I actually had a whole joke prepped where I was going to say, oh, it's interesting listening to your show coming from a country where we have absolutely zero problematic policies or, or uh, pop culture or anything. And then, as you alluded to, clearly that's not true. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, in mm. fact, there's a, um, there's a podcast I listen to. I don't listen to much true crime, but Canadian true crime is one I listen to. And it's actually a woman from Brisbane who lives in Canada. Um, and she talks up, uh, about a lot of uh, true crime cases and so much of it, there's so many through lines, especially, especially with like um, missing and murdered indigenous women. Like it's just mm -hmm. the same shit. Um, yeah. So anyway, Grim, it's me. <laughs> Thank you, Josie. Thank you for bringing the Grim. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. You're welcome. All right. Um, on that note, shall, uh, why do you folks bring up the uh, shit cunts who lost their seat on the weekend? Thing? Am I able to do that? Or yeah, it's here coming. we go. Here we and go. I just want to uh, say that I hope that uh, the democracy sausage does not take off, uh, kind of as you do. But my reasoning being that that's the the well, it's a working title of the political erotica I'm writing right now. <laughs> so stomp on my plan. There. Democracy sausage, beautiful. Look though. Look, there'll be an episode about that, probably more broadly about like sausages in bread, because it is just like a popular snack at like the hardware mega stores we have here. And it is also just like the easy, I'm having people easy. over, what food can I make that? Yeah, and it is yummy, but yeah, it's, you know, I don't know. Yummy They're fine. Snack. There is this, yeah, there's, there's like a fixation on them. And I don't know. We, we will get to that episode at some point because yeah, I have, I have stuff on that. <laughs> Oh, wait, sorry, Josie, please, uh, please take okay. us for your delightful presentation. All right, here we are. Don't mind me, I'm, I'm listening. I'm just going to grab something. Yeah, that's all right. All right. <laughs> Trevor Evans. <laughs> 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 I'm, he's gay. Um, I, I mentioned that because he, he makes a point of it um, every time uh, he talks. Um, in fact, I only learned that he was gay at my very first pride parade uh in 2019 and i remember my friend and i esther were looking at each other like a few people in the crowd were like he's gay because like he, this dude so to give context to overseas people the liberal party despite the name are our conservative party um and trevor evans is part of the uh liberal party yeah conservative party um and at that pride uh he was like you know I, from memory, we had just gone through, um, we had just introduced marriage equality into Australia, but that happened through the most traumatic way possible, um, through basically, uh, they conducted a nationwide survey of whether or not we think that marriage equality should be a thing. And, mm -hmm. um, people took their lives from it because of all the campaigning around it, pushing yes, pushing no. Um, anyway, Trevor Evans, he always threatened to cross the floor um, and basically, like, you know, vote opposite to his party's position, but he never did it. Um, so yeah. a lot of people in the Australian queer community don't like Trevor Evans and therefore we didn't clap for him at Pride. And he said he had a Jeb Bush please clap moment uh, where he's like, come on, guys. Yeah, and we're all just like, uh, fuck off. Um, and yeah, as I as I noted there, he refuses to stand up for um, trans kids in um, different, um, in many ways. And uh, as recently as last week, just before the election, someone posted uh, that he sent out an email um, and it was titled LGBT targeted mail. Uh, obviously Beautiful. tailoring his messaging oh, no. um, to his audience. And I just think that's beautiful. Um, next slide, please. Bye, bitch. Bye, bitch. <laughs> uh, and my little trivia about Trevor Evans um, is that in 2016, he used a fake congressperson's bio as his own bio. Um, on his website and this was discovered through uh, someone who worked for BuzzFeed at the time because you can see here he changed his name from Trevor to Tim on his own fucking website. <laughs> oh no! Um, and yeah, he did not grow up. Uh, <laughs> that's, none of that's very true. Um, but yeah, next please. 
So he needs so to figure good. out I, how to I like edit the, his stuff. The brashness of it, like mixed with the laziness of that move so much. I know, right? It's really the energy it. of how we do this show. Incredibly brash, incredibly lazy. Yes. <laughs> um, even, okay. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Also, even though like, you know, our show is like quite quite slapdash, I at least double check things and, you know, make edits and posts and stuff like that. It's just like, come on, man. Like You're consistent read the text. about what your name is. Um, yes. Which... Yes. Simple things. <laughs> yeah. Um sorry. Yes. This uh, asshole. Yeah, this asshole, KKK. Christina Kersha Keneally, uh, she just lost her seat. She is actually in the Labour Party, which is the left-wing party. Um, she lost to an independent uh, woman, I believe. Uh, she's a SEPO. Do you folks know what a SEPO is? No. Is, it, is it like a turf? No, a SEPO. Okay, so SEPO means American um, because a yank can, using rhyming slang, septic tank, Oh, and, I didn't know that. And then Seppo, septic tank. Um, yeah, so she's a Seppo from Ohio. Um, she was a parachute candidate, so she's quite wealthy. Um, and, oh, am I robot voicing? I hear you great. Okay. No, you sound good to me. Okay. Um, so, um, basically, she isn't. she doesn't have many or any connections to the community that she was running in. And um, and she has a cop son, so two things that people don't like. Um, mm -hmm. And she lost her seat recently, even though um, Labor had always held that seat. Um, and she's not likable for many reasons, but one of them is that she's staunchly pro um, locking up asylum seekers. Um, and as you can see here, she tries to walk this line of both advocating for uh, the family that I've shown on the slide here, they um, were living in a community in Australia. Um, I believe one, if not both of the girls have, were born here and then they were sent back. They're still in detention right now. Um, and uh, she used them as a prop to be like, vote for me. Meanwhile, this tweet down the bottom here is only from, I believe, the 14th of May where she believes that uh, people should pay for their own illegal incarceration. Um, so she's a cunt and I hate her very much and I'm so glad she's gone. Um, some aren't though, so next slide please. Yeah, this is this is unbelievable. This I was so mad about this last night. Uh, my, my um, I don't think this supports my animations. I had some star wipes included. That's how I spent most of my morning is relearning oh, no. how to do star wipes. I know, I know. Oh. Um, and so basically, this is not part of the Labour Party, but people who really supported uh, her. Um, we've, we're now in the midst of this uh, Bertha conspiracy as it pertains to the person who won her seat. So um, the Dye independent Lee, I who, believe her name is. Yes. Um, she's from, she was a refugee at the age of 12 from South Vietnam. Um, we have a law at the moment that states that you can't be a dual citizen in Australia and hold office. Um, so some weirdos are trying to prove that she actually should not uh, be holding office currently. Um, but as you can see here, South Vietnam, a fucking simple Google existed from 1955 to 1975. Where is she going to get her documents from proving that she's from South Vietnam and that she is still a citizen of South Vietnam? Not to mention there's also legal precedent to show that um, uh, one of our other people who lost their seat, um, his mom was a uh, Hungarian Jewish refugee and she was deemed stateless. So therefore her son was not a dual citizen. Anyway, just real fucking weird Bertha conspiracy shit happening um, from supposed progressive people. Uh, so, yeah. Sorry, we're we're bad. Bad. <laughs> so we should say the main source of this are like weird labor psychos on Twitter who have like gotten steadily, steadily more insane over the last couple of years. Uh, I have muted or blocked most of them. And uh, yeah, drips. they're just, yep, yeah, drips. Because I don't know, for some reason that the teardrop emoji kind of became a symbol of theirs. I don't know 
I don't personally remember where it came Water from. Water usage, I think, from memory. Uh, okay. Anyway, they are. It's they've really asked themselves as like quite far right members of the Labour Party. I don't know. Their politics are kind of inconsistent. But uh, yeah, they've really gone just like, you know, extremely racist over you know this Burfa conspiracy, and uh, they fucking suck. And I I hope the the beer they get crowdfunded uh, gives them the shits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there we go. Um, yeah, sorry, folks. I, I meant for this to be more funny than it is, but I'm just getting mad. <laughs> it's, like, it's just so much fucking racism in this country. No, it's Look, good. Are... Well, we pride ourselves in jarring tonal shifts. So, so, so like her actual situation, if I understand correctly, because I was briefly seeing this earlier today or yesterday, was like she was definitely born in what was then South Vietnam. Mm -hmm. She definitely fled as a refugee. Mm -hmm. And any other from any other country you would just like renounce your citizenship to run but because that country was basically removed from and absorbed into north vietnam to become vietnam like mm -hmm. there's there's no way for her to even do that paperwork right nope yeah she's she's stateless you know or you know she would have been stateless when she came at the time to... yeah yeah exactly right and so it's kind of like she lived in multiple refugee camps in i believe hong kong the Philippines. Right. So she was stateless. <laughs> yeah. So as an analogy, it's sort of like when I had that Twitter account that I created where I forgot the password, but then the email to reset it was through my university. And if you don't use your email after you graduate, they just delete your email. So I can't recover mm -hmm. the account. I can't delete it. I can't do anything. It just sits there. So yep. really, I, I empathize yep. with her a lot. Yeah. We're in the same boat. <laughs> Shared lived experience. Same, same. Yeah. Look, look. the one funny part of this, uh, not to end on like a really downer note, is that Christina Keneally is this rich asshole who got like parachuted into an electorate she didn't belong to, uh, a community she didn't belong to, and Labour thought this was a good idea, and they're completely surprised that she got her ass handed to her by a local candidate who was well-liked in the community. Yeah, um, and this is... Sorry. Oh, sorry. I believe uh, the community, I can't remember the name of the electorate, but I believe it has, like, a pretty large Vietnamese community. And, you know, Dai Li being a member of that community was... No one should have been shocked that they, like, you know, trusted her more than this, like, random wanker who was teleported in. Yeah. I think it's... I think that it speaks to the inherent racism that you think that... Fowler, thank you. Fowler, yeah, thank you um thank you Al. that like um that the people of fowler have no connection to where they live and that they're too silly to recognize when someone is there just for political gain and not for um their own constituents um yeah and and so i don't know anything about the person who won and her policies and i suspect that we probably don't agree on a lot but i do think it's very mm. fucking cool that people were like you're not doing this and and to be and to be clear um the other person who was supposed to run for labor in fowler was a another um asian australian woman and they chose a white um a white woman over her uh to run so that's also important context um yeah but yeah I like Next. also that this entirely Sorry. hinges upon like this very rigid rule that you just can't be a dual citizen and hold, is it any office? Um, I don't know about any, just, I, I know that it's certainly federal. Um, I think it's, it, I think it speaks to, um, I mean, obviously it's problematic in so many ways, but just to bring up sort of a, something that maybe other overseas folks can relate to is that, um, I guess there are anti-Semitism is certainly a, a little bit different in Australia um, in that a lot of, uh, from what I can see, anti-Semitism is more rife in America. And there's this thing about dual loyalty to is the state of Israel and um, I guess America. And mm. there's like, oh, well, how do you know that this politician is working in the interest of America when they're also a Jew? And it's sort of like this weird, like, skepticism of, like, someone being tricksy if they've got dual loyalty. And it's like, it's just really outdated in my opinion. But, um, yeah. 
There, uh, there have been people who've suggested in Australia that it is just like a way to discourage like you know non-white people from holding mm-hmm. like electoral positions. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, um, <laughs> sorry, um, one of our viewers at the moment is, um, my beloved Jew friend, Dan, um, and he said he's a Mossad agent, so just, just for clarification, um, yeah, thank, yeah. thank you for your service, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Oh, no, no. Thank you, thank you. Please teach us all Krav Maga, the shittiest martial art. <laughs> Sorry. I'm... Okay. Next, please. <laughs> no, I'm. I'm going to put that I... one in the notes for uh for another erotic idea because we need to have one for every episode. But I'm going to be agent. like, <laughs> well, yeah. See, it'll be it'll be someone who's like, you know, they they enter this situation under the pretext that they work for the Israeli special forces, but they actually bring out some oil and they're like, oh, didn't you hear? I'm a massage agent, and then you know, <laughs> things yeah, escalate. As you can imagine. <laughs> Guy who misheard Massad agent. <laughs> also, oh, that's my favorite new guy. <laughs> also, I seem to upset Josie a little bit by saying Krav Maga sucks, but you could incorporate that into a sex scene because oh. I believe Krav Maga is all about like using whatever's at hand to just kill the person. So, you know, you can incorporate that into a sex scene. Just like. Oh, no, you didn't upset me. Okay, good, good. Okay, because Krav Maga does sucks. I did Taekwondo. I <laughs> I... Taekwondo. It's cool. It has high kicks. Supremacy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so the next one is Craig Kelly. Um, I'm going to quote someone from Twitter for this one. Uh, UAP, so that means United Australian Party, um, lead candidate, anti-vax Facebook star and king of the one-finger typing boomers, Craig <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> you know the one. You know the one. Uh, has lost his old seat of Hughes, getting around 7% of the vote. Unlike everything Kelly believes, you couldn't make this up, folks. Uh, Chuff Wiggler, <laughs> 2022. For context, Chuff means marijuana, pot, etc. Um, so, yeah, and this is a picture of him being egged. It wasn't a successful egging. Um, the egg did not break, but he was still humiliated, and that's what matters. Um, next, please. Yeah, did it's anyone a, get egged this year? Counts. Or uh, no, just Craig, Craig Craig Kelly got egged this time around. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, um, sorry, just reading the slide. Yeah, yeah sorry, I, I misspelled Craig Kelly, uh, and then I decided I didn't care Craig enough to. Kelly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, he chased, he changed his Facebook banner uh, to Paw Patrol because he thought it would trigger the leftist, communist, gay transhumanists um we didn't care sorry did, more, so did he more like confused have a post? Than anything yeah. sorry <laughs> did he have a post saying that that was his intention there or was he just like that was just oh why? i have no idea someone told me about oh. this i, I oh, okay. i'm not on facebook okay i'm not a boomer <laughs> I, I treat Facebook like a poisonous room. I go in every now and then to delete my cringy 2012 posts and then I and see which of my friends have lost their fucking minds. Yeah, you got to hold your breath when you go in or else it'll, you'll inhale the poison. Yeah. <laughs> or, exactly. Also, sorry, I joined our suburbs Facebook page. I occasionally go in there to laugh at the freaks and send screenshots of it to my wife and we laugh about like, holy fuck, we live in the weirdest fucking suburb. Okay, do you folks have like community Facebook groups where you are? Yeah, okay, yeah, so that's, that's like a intuition. Yeah, so yeah, I had to leave mine because I started getting into fights because they would take pictures of people who were clearly mentally unwell and talk about calling the cops. And oh. I started going off on people and then I was like, for self-care reasons, I'm leaving Facebook. <laughs> so. Um, your, your suburb, Josie, I know we discussed this earlier, I used to shoot real estate videos in that suburb. Um, as a result of that, I had to occasionally do drone videography, photography, the only times I've been shouted at for flying a drone have been in in Josie's suburb. Like I had a lady go off at me and say, tell mm-hmm. me not to fly above her house. There are no rules about that. I was not being like weird. I was like, give me his up in the air. Anyway, a lot of cops <laughs> in Josie's suburb. <laughs> you, you weren't wearing a trench coat and operating your little drone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was going like, <laughs> like, you know, yeah, I was doing normal, like, normal, like, trying to track, you know, I'm really good at, like, fucking, you know, moving and tracking around a house, oh, but yeah, like. I'm good at moving too, mate. All right, <laughs> no <need> to track. <laughs> I can run real fast. No, I can't, that's a lie. Um, anyway, so, <laughs> no, but, um, yeah, I live on, like, the worst house in the best street, and so there's lots of rich bitches around me. Um, yep, yep, but yeah, so Craig Kelly, Facebook, next please. 
We're nearly done. Sorry, I talk a lot. No. This is great. <laughs> I'm learning a lot. Thank you. Uh, and a bit of Craig Kelly trivia is that he is a huge anti-vaxxer, believes in ivermectin. Um, and uh, I had to go on the Wayback Machine for this, but he emailed a whole bunch of like people from the Therapeutic Goods Association um, and linked them a study and he, he linked them to a local file of his computer. And that's that's just my little bit of... <laughs> Yeah. Gentleman 88, I think we have a fascist in the crowd. What the fuck? Yeah, you know, Ban once him. you start blowing up like we uh, do, you're just you're going to start attracting the fash and they're going to come in there with their you know, their nice scarves and their, you know, advanced makeup tutorials. Fascist yeah. shirts for fashionistas, right? Sorry? Fashionista. Fashionistas for fashionistas, right? Like, fashionistas, yeah, absolutely. Yes, yes. Sorry, I'm one of those people who has not political on their, like, hinge profile. Oh, shit. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it means that you are apolitical. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> next, please. Oh, uh, Eric, is it Abetz? Yeah, Eric Abetz, yeah. Yeah, uh, bad dude. So, again, it's kind of ties everything together. Super horrible policies. Um, yes, gentle Ben, you're right. You did give me both of these Craig Kelly facts, and it makes me think that maybe you're fascist if you know so much about him. Um, uh, yeah, uniformly bad dude. His great uncle was an SS officer and convicted war criminal. Um, his grandfather was also a member of the Nazi party. He got voted out. That's all I have to say, but yeah, pretty fucking cooked. Anyway, I chose this photo because Australian Human Rights Commission and knowing that um, he comes from fascist stock um, was just very funny to me. It's it's funny because people talk about how Queensland is, you know, quite a conservative state and it is in some ways, but like Tasmania, I think is probably like worse than us in a fashion. Like I think, were they, were they the last Weird. state to decriminalize, you know, homosexuality? Like... Uh, so yeah, be... from memory, but he's, so Tasmania could have some really good, like, some really good stuff and then be really um, outdated in other ways. I guess, like, everywhere. I mean, again, mm. Victoria is the home of Melbourne, which is, like, you know, the the New York of Australia, but there was a 210% increase of indi incarcerated Indigenous women over the past 10 years, so. Um, yes. So we can't really single out any one state. Every every state in this in this yeah. country is kind of shit in some way and territory. Yeah. yeah. Uh, next, mm. please. Relatable. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Victoria is the home of Melbourne. <laughs> Fuck. Oh uh, yeah, Tim Wilson. Okay. Um, this is because apparently Australians don't like to see uh, many in excellence. Um. So Tim Wilson, he just got voted out. He advocated for the recognition of the Armenian genocide, which we still haven't done here. Um, and uh, but he still has shitty policies and takes the worst fucking food photos of my life. I hope he um, increases uh, with that now that he doesn't have a job. Um, anyway, <laughs> this is the moment that I found out that he was an Armenian Australian. Um, and it's because he posted this photo, which is dog shit, objectively dog shit. He does look bad. He's like, he doesn't look this horrible all the time. But this <laughs> looks young. But why do you look like uh, Uncle Fester, heart eyes? Just like, I was crying for ages. And then just like lighting. And also my deeply recessed Armenian eyes. What the fuck, dude? Wow. It just really tickles me. I don't know. It just like, I fucking love it. <laughs> Why do you look like Very one of the villains from the Dark City? But uh, I feel I like this ad hoc lighting setup is doing the same thing to my eyes, but. <laughs> Are you on mini? <laughs> that I know of. Yeah, yeah. I just, it just oh, yeah. really fucking tickled me. No, your lighting is lovely, Kelly. It's a, it's nice and soft. It's good. Fine. We want to avoid harsh shadows <laughs> like that. So, you know. <laughs> Big soft source of light, diffused. Uh, he's absolutely standing under some down lighting, so that's reinforcing. Like, you know, this is the exact lighting that you know the famous shot of Boris Karloff as Frankenstein. It's called monster lighting. <laughs> yeah, like when you first showed this, I thought that was like a Photoshop someone did. I was like, oh, they kind of like you know, it's like when they shrink Charlie Kirk's face, but it's just they've made him 
extraordinarily just... <laughs> is he maybe he's doing it on purpose idiot. to like look intimidating and try and like intimidate people into voting for him? You'd think so, but I think this is just <laughs> sorry. Charlie Kirk just looks like that naturally. Beautiful. I watched a video of him recently. The motherfucker's face is so small. Like, I it's... do not get how people watch him and take him seriously. Okay, so this brings me back. Oh, Tom Walker. Yeah, that too. Um, so this reminds me of, uh, I think it was through this line of conversation that I started making fun of how Jaylee, uh, Jaylee, Haley Joel Osment has like a tiny face. And then someone in that server said they listened to the podcast that I was in the server of and that they might be here and I died in that ass. I was like, fuck. (laughs) But he's got to know he has a little face. I'm sure he's heard this. It's just a little tiny face. It's okay. Anyway, Mm -hmm. um, next please. Oh man, he totally does. (laughs) (laughs) He looks like that uh, little bit. <laughs> for, for Rick and Morty. <laughs> um, sorry, I talk so much. Um, and so next, we don't know that she's lost her seat. I saw one report saying oh. that she's more likely than Wait, not. You to still keep don't her know? Seat. No, I feel like slow. it's been uncertain for like forty-eight hours now, or maybe I just spend way too much time on Australian podcast discords. But <laughs> um. Yeah, no, I think there's like postal votes and stuff like that um, that we have to consider. But um, yeah, so Pauline Hansen, whether or not she's lost her seat, I do want to make fun of her. Uh, yeah. Very bad person, just always been horrible, helped abol- abolish the federal family court, um, which has nothing to do with the fact that her son is a family court dad, a fucking big loser. Mm-hmm. Um also, like she's like fascist, um, and from memory, her son's Jew. Uh, no, her son isn't Jewish. Her ex-husband's Jewish, which actually, anyway. Um, if you're doing the blood quantum thing, I guess that makes the son have. No, 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 no. I don't do that. It's just like weird. Depends on who you're asking. Matrilineal shit. Mm. Um. Uh. Anyway, one time I accidentally agreed with a Pauline Hanson billboard because she was arguing that um there should be fast internet speeds all around australia which duh especially to rural communities duh Mm -hmm. and then i went home and googled and it turned out that she wanted that because she found out that australians were losing due to lag to overseas gamers which obviously means asian gamers she's very anti-asian um Mm. and i was just like i hate that we got to the same place from very opposite things um oh, so it, pauline it, hansen it, is it, by the sounds of it like she's using her um pretend interest in like these internet speeds for you know the gamers so that she can really just use it as like a smoke screen for racism yeah so it, it she so she's a fake gamer a girl place. is what you're telling me <laughs> she, she yeah she might even be yeah i think she's she's a cat girl as well um, fake gamer girl real racist girl look, yeah it real occurred- racist it occurred to me that she was probably trying to tap into the then two years old Gamergate sentiment. I think it got to her after oh, like two years that like, that. oh, hey, Pauline, like it turns out a bunch of gamers are like racist shitheads. So like maybe you should try appealing to to gamers. So I, and also, I mean, it occurred to me, this is from 2016. So that was when like a lot of reactionary stuff was popping off. Um, yeah. pa- Pauline Hansen getting back into the Senate um, was kind of what galvanized me and like radicalized me as a dirtbag leftist so so we do all owe pauline hansen that i just like lost my job from a tech startup pauline hansen getting elected i was just like fuck this this country sucks so kind of because to be clear this woman had been a politician like during the 90s um and she was a fucking huge fascist racist piece of shit then and then she was out of politics for for quite a while and then to see her get back in, we're like, oh, this isn't good. This is no, bad. No. This <laughs> yeah. fucking sucks. Next, please. I like so the theory that she was going on to, like, that she was trying to latch on to that, like, really toxic online gamer community 
Like she that went to her nephew. She went to her nephew's house and like heard them like yelling racial slurs while he was playing Call of Duty, and she's like, "Those are my people." <clears throat> oh, what's uh, this? I'm yeah. listening now. <laughs> Untapped voters. Oh. oh my god. Oh no! Um, I you want your internet speed to be a bit faster. So, so, okay, we should be clear. She sounds like shit as well. She sounds like she's about uh, to cry every time she talks. <laughs> yeah, which is funny because she's a fascist. And you can make fun of fascists however you want. Um, yep. So, um, Pauline Hanson trivia. So Uluru is the uh, as a sacred site that people uh, were climbing for many many years. Um, it is now closed to tourists climbing it. Thank fuck. Um, mm -hmm. but Pauline Hanson, before she, before it was closed, she insisted that they should keep it open and she went for a climb herself. Then she got stuck and said it was quite dangerous and that maybe it should be closed after all. Um, welcome so, Conrad Pauline. Yeah. yeah. It's only a problem Wait, so when it affects me directly. the second time she came directly. to the right conclusion for the wrong no, reasons? You're, you're quite right on that. Like it, this whole, it only... It, it's only a problem if it affects me personally. It kind of goes back to my Tim Wilson thing about him advocating for, like, the recognition of the Armenian genocide. Well, he's Armenian, and it's like, I wonder if he would be arguing for that if he wasn't, so. Um, mm. But, yeah, and anyway, uh, Pauline Hansen, I can't, like, like Henry Kissinger and people like that, I mean, to be fair, I she's more of like i guess a stochastic terrorist i would argue in my opinion in minecraft um rather than like you know actually performing war crimes um but she's caused so much harm i can't wait to drink to her death yeah yeah straight up and also i mean like i don't think i don't know if the christchurch shooter like had any real connection to her but like he certainly had connections to like far right wing stuff but certainly the the ambient racism in in australia is absolutely someone that pushed guys like that to do atrocities and yeah she's a big part of stoking that so uh fuck off pauline hanson i hope she loses a seat yeah we we can hope we live in hope mm -hmm. yeah and i have that's no it. comment on this comment but oh yeah sorry she's uh yeah she's got covid so so here's ah! hoping that's yeah, <laughs> I I have a my conspiracy theory is that she's vaccinated. So mm. I suspect that as well because don't you have to be to like sit in parliament? Like, so I don't to, like, know. Sit? Yeah. But and, yeah, and um, but yeah, that's it. Anyway, we did vote out some shit cunts, and that is good. We take what wins we can. Congratulations! Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, thank you for putting this together, Josie. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I put in so much hard work. Clearly. <laughs> I, I had to get our production team to pull this name because she reminds me so like she's she Pauline Hansen is far worse, but it's so much bleaker what happens in our Senate because you're appointed and not elected. Uh, you just don't lose your seat. What? Oh, yeah. 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 yeah we just have an appointed Senate. So you just it's it gets a Senate built entirely out of nepotism. Um, it's, it's probably not healthy. that different from the UK House of Lords, but it's like, uh, I don't know. It's like no one really likes it, but no one ever really gets around to doing anything about it. But well, there's like a significant who... amount. Like we could probably do a whole slideshow on this. Um, but there are enough uh, like people who. So sometimes like the the federal conservative party will have some sort of conscience and be like, yeah, okay, the the remarks made by this person were inappropriate. And so what they do is they kick you out of the party, so you just become an independent senator because you can't lose your seat. So there's an entire like uh, caucus of I think it's like ten senators who are like the ten you know people who were so they're just such massive shit cunts that they got kicked out of the conservative party um, and they're just like the this like little like cabal of like two yeah, like two, just act as they wish. two fascists like... for the conservative party people they're their own little like independent caucus in our senate it's it's amazing our senate is so cool yeah there Who's you go there's fish? Lynn Bayak. She, oh, yeah. She's sort of our Pauline Hanson. I don't know. She, mostly awful shit. She said residential schools were good. She can call no, her no, 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 no. Wait, sorry. That's the. They're like kind of the. There was it, that blew up recently because discovered that they were like they had mass graves or something like that. Is that the one? They, they yeah, are constantly keep... finding more and more mass graves. It's real. I think this was on the heels of one of the mass grave findings where she was doing that thing of like, you know, we never talk about the good things that happened. Oh, oh. so 
Um, it was I've on the. Sitting, oh. I've been. There's a new um, podcast that's come out um, that uh, is still being released every week, and it's interviewing. It's just about one school, um, and it's giving me sort of more insight into like we had residential schools here. Um, but yeah, sort of giving the um, Canada insight to it. And they were quoting whoever the prime minister or president was at the time in Canada. And they they, they called it like the native question. Like, what oh, the yeah, fuck? Classic phrase Sorry, you use. I just, yeah, I just, yeah. The I, word I had... question after an ethnicity, nothing good ever comes. Wow. Jesus so Christ. like the fact that anyone has like, could she would know that. Like, she would know that very well. And oh, she still know. thinks that it was a good thing. Like, it wasn't for improving education outcomes. It wasn't for any of that. It was genocide. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Just, yeah. Sorry. I get worked no. up. No, no, no worries. time for a jarring tonal shift. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, wait, 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 what you are you going to say? Thing. Oh, I was going to just uh, feed into that and say, like, you, I, you guys talk about on your show about... Um, how in Australia there's kind of this like, you know, that that same sort of like jokey, like free loving or like free loving, like um like happy go lucky, like, oh, we can take any joke and we're just like a we're always laughing or whatever. And that's something that I've always had a problem with is the um Canadians are so nice. Yes. And oh Canada's mm -hmm. such a nice country and nothing ever but nothing bad ever happens in Canada. Well one of uh actually one of our previous guests um uploaded a thing to Twitter where Someone in my city got yelled at for speaking Tagalog while they were walking down the street. So Speak, racism sorry, is can you very say that real. Again? Like speaking what? So they were speaking Tagalog with their family. Oh wow! Um, oh, okay. While they were walking down the street, and they just got screamed at by some lady that decided that she needed to insert her opinion yeah. in the worst possible yeah. way. So it's the like more, you know, the Go more yeah. relaxed a sort of Western country like seems, the more it's like, no, 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 they're just cops and they're like psycho. They're relaxed I... to their racism, I think. Yeah. Yeah. A yeah. friend of the show, Olivia, was tweeting the other day about how uh, they were standing next to a nice old grandma and then they had a look at their phone, at the old lady's phone, and the old lady was typing out some screed against a black family or something like that. So, so oh. yeah, uh, you... Yep, yep, you can encounter like lovely middle-aged people who just have like the shittiest opinions and i actually found the tweet that kind of one of the many things that like slammed together to create this podcast it was a by twitter user tiger web about how like australians love to present that we're like easygoing laid-back larrikins that we're irreverent but in reality we're all cops mm -hmm. i know i've like read something like that on the podcast but yeah that's yeah it's a uh, interesting to know that canada has a similar thing but like mm -hmm. no no we are actually like you know, we love to joke until the joke's on us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. We're just goofy, fun-loving people. We drink beer and we play hockey and we're like, everyone's welcome. And then, mm. yeah. yeah. Until yeah. someone's First walking off, down the street and, and, and something that they're saying. Sorry. Is... No, no you both, go ahead. Those are both noble activities, but go on. Oh, yeah. No, Did I you... just kind of say, like, um, I think the stance of, a, of Australian Gothic, at least, is like, it's not self-flagellation to talk about this. Like, if we want to improve anything, we just have to be honest about it. Um, exactly. So, yeah. Yeah, I finally broke Nicole, apparently. <laughs> I have this effect on people. But it, it is funny how, like, exactly the same it is, because I was just remembering this, uh, this, like, comment from... It was just, like, people on Reddit doing the, like, Canadians are nice thing, but they were like, yeah, every... Australian I've ever met has been the most chilled out person. Like, well, yeah, you met backpackers and they're all just yeah. like working at a ski lift. Like, yeah, I think it was like I had that was like a week after I was just seeing this. Uh, it was just one of those many like race riot protests that happened in Australia that we do not have time to get into because uh, mm -hmm. we, we do have to. Sorry, I'm, yeah. I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna let this comment breathe. It's good. Let, yeah. it, let it let it percolate. <laughs> Oh, ooh, wow. I have never heard of that. That's fucking terrifying. Mm. I believe some of my, like, first fleet ancestors were prison guards. So, yep, yep. Can't confirm that. Oh, no, mine were all crims. <laughs> also, the fact that a lot of those that definitely criminals... definitely doesn't come through, does it? <laughs> if I'm Podcast not, like, incoming. If I remember correctly, a lot of the, like, criminals sent to Australia were, like, Irish people who are, who their crime was just, like, being Irish. 
stealing bread um, so they don't starve to death. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, the so I my Jewish an- ancestry came here, I think, for economic reasons, but um, otherwise, like the Anglo side of my family came here. I checked their ancestry records, and they stole sweetmeats, which I think was like just Tons? like lollies. They s- no, no, I, I don't know what sweetmeats are. Sweetmeats, I think, are refer to like certain like it refers to offal. I think it's like kidneys, the tongue, liver, tra- things like that. They got transported for stealing fucking tongues. <laughs> <laughs> Look, back in the day, that was they were considered nice cuts of meat. Like, you know, it's that weird thing that happens where, like, food trends happen. Like, back in the day, you know, like, you know, in some circles, like, kidney is still considered, like, you know, high class, even though, like, you know, I like eating kidneys sometimes, but, like, my wife is, like, only when I'm not home because I hate oh, the silly. smell of it. Like, yeah. So Okay, sweet meats are very much candy, candied fruits. Okay, so little sweeties. Oh, okay. okay, little sweeties. Oh, okay, um, okay. Sweet yeah. Meats is also a draft title of an erotic I'm writing. <laughs> Democracy Sausage and Sweet Meats. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, it's like, a, it's like a super duo. So um, anyway, thank you everyone for enduring my little, my little rant. No worries. No, no. It's good. It's the least effort so we've ever had to put in, and I think that should be the new precedent. That is good for me. I, get, I need to stop doing this. I do this every time I'm like, yeah, that oh. was great. And then I keep reading things online. It's like, oh, you yeah, shouldn't yeah. do that anymore. I think I'm doing, I think I'm doing anti-Italian racism all the time because I go, mwah, mwah, all the time. Uh, also, look, uh, this gesture for scuba diving means you're okay. So you can just say that you're okay. <laughs> it doesn't mean Heil Hitler. It, I mean, it probably does, but I, yeah, I didn't hear, I haven't, I'm not sure I've met any scuba divers who are online enough to be like, so, hey, what do we think about, like, this gesture being co-opted by, like, weird internet psychos? And, you should just do, like, a, a shaka. Oh, that is, that means, like, you've seen something awesome, you're happy, which oh, is difficult, okay, because, okay, like, <laughs> the trouble, the trouble is, thumbs up means, like, we need to go up, we need to go up, usually because there's like an emergency or something like that. So that, so this means like, you're okay, I'm breathing fine, my mask isn't flooded, everything like that. Anyway, this is, uh, welcome to Scuba Dive. I'm breathing fine. That's a perfect transition into our next segment, which is Scuba Diving 101, led by Lucas. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, uh, don't don't follow me on Scuba Diving, I'll get you killed. I went Scuba Diving at the start of the year, my mask was flooding the whole time, I kept like using all my air, I kept being the first one to be sent back to the boat. Everyone else was like a really (laughs) pro, I think it was, I hadn't shaved, so like it was creating a gap between my mask and my skin, so like water was flooding into my mask, I was having to constantly like hold my mask and go like, like purge the water. Anyway, it was fine, I saw some cool fish. I saw some nudie branks. <gasps> so like, yeah. yeah. I Sorry. saw a, the one guy who had a like sick camera rig. It was like, yo, I need to find like cool nudie branks. Nudie branks are like sea slugs, but they look <laughs> wild. They're like super brightly colored. Uh, yeah, I saw like a pretty blue one on like a on like a brain coral, and I was just like, mm-hmm. like trying <laughs> to get the dude's is attention. The name of my next erotica novel. Oh, what's <laughs> that behind you? Sorry? Who's your dog? Who's your dog? Oh, sorry, that's Luna? Yeah, yeah. You may have heard oh, her go... Oh, Yeah, you may have heard her. My, my wife came home before. Luna is part... She's part Husky, part Rottweiler. And she has the Rottweiler, like, vocalizations where they, like, talk. And so you may have heard her come to the top of the stairs and go... Rawr, 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 like, and not <laughs> chew back. That's gorgeous. And was, I love that. It's just like... Speaking of dogs... Kelly is doggedly <laughs> hounding me to just like, trans- transition or uh, move into what do they call <laughs> it? Move do. into the we'll question jar. Talking. Pivot to the question jar. Well, that's what I was going for <laughs> many minutes ago with jarring tonal shift. Oh, oh did not catch sorry, that. Sorry, sorry. We we didn't shut the fuck up. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. I was like waiting. I was like I had so many puns lined up, and then the subject kept changing, and I was so interested. I was like, speaking of diving, why don't we dive into that question jar? It's such um, a good one. I need to <laughs> edit out the bits. To use it. <laughs> no, it's good. Really, to... the only person who has a bad time as a result is Josh, and you're like, who cares? It's only like the big finale of his story. Like, fuck him, fuck him, kick him off. <laughs> Aww. Someone who has to edit, I, I, I'm i sorry. I'm just making all this extra work. Josh so lives okay. matter. <laughs> oh, we do not edit for length, let me tell you. <laughs> okay, okay, here's the transition. Yeah, so 
we came up with this gimmick and we're like, this will be so good when we have to fill time because we're gonna have to fill so much time and we always run out of time to do any of our gimmicks. Um, but I, I don't know. Um, it's a cool concept. It's entirely Nicole's idea. And <laughs> um, so basically the idea is this is our question jar and it's full of questions. So um, if, it, if it were one guest, what we would say is, uh, you choose the like one at a time if you want to draw a question from the jar. Like in this case, your remote, I'll pull it for you. Uh, and then you have to you have to answer the question if you draw it. Um, and then if you want to draw another one, then you answer another one. You can do as many as you want. The number of questions you answer is the number of questions you get to add to the jar for the next guest. Ooh, I like that. So Ooh, I would say okay. this just simultaneously applies to both of you, I, I think. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Give us a question. Yeah. Okay, so we'll, I don't know. We'll treat you as a team of two, and if you, if one of you answers it, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Yeah, that counts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. The first question, have you ever had an experience that you would describe as sublime? Oh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, Josie, you can take this one. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I talk about this on my other podcast, The Hill to Die On, in one of our Patreon episodes. Um... I love in the hotter subtropical warmer months to have a cold shower and I cut up a mango and I eat a mango in the shower. Um, and huh. it's just, it's just a great time. People think it's disgusting, but actually it's like you can go to town on this mango cheek and you get all the fibers stuck in your teeth and it's okay. Cause like all of the juice, it just, you're in the shower. It's just, it's fine. It's perfectly legal. They haven't outlawed it yet. And it is <laughs> a hedonistic, beautiful experience. If you're very if you're feeling very, very hot, I would recommend getting a beautifully ripe refrigerated mango and having it in a cold shower. Coincidentally, it's also my pickup line, you know. I just wink at someone, I say, go to town on this mango cheek. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds delicious. Oh, it's delicious. What about, I... what about you, Lucas? I, I I got nothing. Sorry. Uh, I don't know. I so I may have talked about this before. I don't know. It's a yeah. Sorry. I did talk about this on the Byron Bay episode. I'm um, going back to scuba diving talk. Uh, yeah. I don't know. This is kind of like a pretty normy thing. I saw a sleeping gray nurse shark, and that That's was an cute. experience. That was yeah. That was an experience. That I was just like, this is so cool. And like, I was about five meters away from it. The visibility was kind of shit. We sort of saw it emerging out of the fog, and we kind of like kneeled on the sand and watched it. Well, like oh, when they what? sleep, they just hang there. And I was just I'm like, just oh my chilling. God, I'm so close to a shark. This is so cool. And That's yeah, that cute. was, that was wonderful. And then I ate a mango at the bottom of the water. <laughs> oh, no wonder your mask keeps filling I up with water. You. Yeah, uh, that's the final test. Um, sorry, one other bit of weird scuba diving trivia I've come across. Apparently some diving agencies, uh, because I don't really have like an experience as cool as Josie's. Um, apparently uh, some scuba diving instructors have made like a rule that only seems to apply if you're a conventionally attractive woman that on your hundredth dive, you have to get naked un under the water. You have to go down to the sand and like take off your suit, take off your bathing suit no. and get it. Yeah. And everyone has uh, all the things I've heard are just like, no, we don't do that. That's clearly just some creepy instructor trying to like get some chick nude. That's fucked up. No. I just yeah. noticed also, that Josie and I made the exact same face <laughs> as soon as you said that. And it was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> also, I mean, like, it baffles me, and maybe it's just because I'm a new diver, but, like, have you ever tried to take off a wetsuit? You're a new diver? I look like such a... No, 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 just at the end of a dive, like, taking off the wetsuit, it's just, like, I gotta get someone to help me out of it. It's, like, really, it sticks to you. Like, so, I don't know. I don't... I don't I've seen photos of people doing it, and I'm just like, mate, I think they were... I think the diving instructor just wanted to see you nude. They're like, taking <laughs> advantage of people. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't done extensive research on it, but I was just like, are you sure that's a thing? Yeah. Anyway, so, so how, about a, how about another question from the jar? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Sorry for uh, upsetting everyone. What's that? Sorry for upsetting everyone with my, like, gross no, diving stories. Like, this no more scuba just... diving stories for the right. podcast. I've told them. I think one of the main themes of the show is upsetting people, so... Okay, good, good. <laughs> uh, all right. Oh, wow. This is another sincere question. This is shocking considering the jar. Uh, who is your favorite obscure historical figure? Oh. Ah, oh, um, I don't know if he's obscure, but Talleyrand. 
Um, he managed to kind of, I think it was like maybe four or five consecutive uh, French governments managed to be like on the right side and be assassinated. Um, I don't know. I have a whole book about him. Uh, he was just a, just a little sneaky guy and had a stinky leg. And I like that. <laughs> anyway, that's just my answer. Sorry, I'm shaking my desk. Uh, sorry, this is kind of contemporary and also just marked me out as a huge nerd. I'm sorry, but uh, the Chinese military strategist Zhu Ge Liang, and I principally remember him because he was my favorite character from the game Dynasty Warriors. He beat people up with a fan in that game. Not historically accurate. <laughs> also, he's he was he he sat in a tent and he made war stratagems. He did a bunch of like cool like made optical illusions to trick a bunch of horsemen into entering a maze so they couldn't like attack a bunch of military forces. I prince he's in my mind at the moment because he's the subject of an anime called Ya Boy Kong Ming, which has just started airing, where he dies in like, you know, the third century BC and gets teleported to like present day Shibuya, where he becomes a club promoter. Uh please go check out the show Ya Boy Kong Ming. It's very silly, very fun. It sounds like weeb shit. <laughs> it me. is. It is very much weeb shit, but but it's good, I promise. <laughs> Wait, is your show as divided on ours as on the concept of we weeb shit? Yeah, I'm anti weeb. Uh, yeah, yeah, I brought up anime stuff before, and Josie was just like, what the fuck are you talking about, idiot? <laughs> yeah. Maybe so, we can enough. just trade the... Josh and possibly Ian for Josie, and then everyone's <laughs> just kind of in the bubble they want to be in. Oh, God. Our podcast gets, podcast gets even worse. Beautiful. I'll, we'll do it. We'll do it. And speaking of weeb shit, um, we should probably bring out our Game Master. Yes. <laughs> I'm sad we didn't get any, like, really fucked up questions. We all got kind of, yeah. like, nice questions that I never know how to answer, and I resort to, like, nerdy shit. Well, <laughs> you'll have to come back again, or write two fucked up questions to put in the jar. I will. Yep, right. yep. One, two each. Someone wants to ask a fu fucked up question. Oh, sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to stop them. Dan, now we have to wait for the 15 second delay because the stream is not such a delay. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Um, but ah! uh, let's all speculate wow. on what it okay. might be. Okay, damn. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Oh boy. Uh, Josie, you got anything? Well, it's... <laughs> you did the face. Oh yeah, that was accident. This is what I mean. I accidentally, I do it by accident all the time. Sorry, I thought you were. I That's thought someone was going to prompt you to do that, but we got a rare Josie face. Ah, uh, I did it. I'm not doing it again. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, favorite historical fascist. Um, I've got to say, I don't really have one. Um, maybe what? Pol Pot. <laughs> <laughs> favorite well. in what way? Because because he's not white, so it's a little bit different. I hate to say this. I got. I've just thought of one. Sorry, I hate this. <laughs> oh, bit, oh my god, I just said that. Sorry. Okay, uh, my favorite his favorite historical fascist, uh, the, the artist Salvador Dali. He he was pro Franco Spain, I believe. Um, yeah, did did cool art, but he fucking sucked. Uh, fuck you, Salvador Dali. Uh, I still kind of <laughs> like the lobster phone. Yeah, I can't yeah. believe that I chose Pol Pot, the leader, and you're just like, oh, yeah, Salvador Dali. I'm really yeah, excited can... <laughs> to just clip your answer to the question, Josie, and I'm just going to, like, post it on the Hell of a Way to Die Discord, and I'll be like, yeah, man, check out our episode. It was so good. You got to <laughs> pick someone who didn't do any actual atrocities, but was just kind of complicit. That's, that's how you play Who's Your Favorite Fascist, the game we just made on Born Under Punches. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, that that's for sure going in the jar. <laughs> hey, sorry everyone. No. Hey, anytime. We did ask. Um, cool. Well, let's bring out Josh and he can tell us who his favorite historical fascist is. <laughs> Oh, anyways, oh. Uh, killed my group. First, first, first of all, uh, can we just talk about how I was not expecting neither 
uh, Zhu Zhiliang or uh, Talleyrand as favorite historical figures. So thank you for making my night. Uh, <laughs> Zhu Zhiliang is also super famous for his empty fort strategy, which is just premium bullshit material. We just sat at a gate. He sat at a gate acting like he was cocky as shit. Say, like, so these people are just like, oh, fuck, we can't go into this fort. It's probably just like ready for an ambush. He's just he's so cocky. He's sitting on the fucking gate. He bluffed. <laughs> he bluffed his fucking way to make an army not go into an empty fort. That's so good. Yeah. So anyways, that's why he's my hero personally. So uh, I, I should, I got to say in this anime, in where he, wherein he becomes like a manager for like a J-pop star, he uses all of his like famous strategies to like help bring people to the show. So it's, it's goofy as shit. Yeah, yeah, so, no, I actually I, got a buddy that recommended that one, so it's on the please, list. Please, yep, yep. <laughs> sorry, sorry to do this to you. Uh, yeah. And as oh, for Talleyrand... Oh, Josie looks so unhappy. <laughs> as for Talleyrand, I just, yeah, I have to appreciate that this man managed to make his way through, I think it's four or five administrations without getting his head cut off. I know! Incredible! Fucking and incredible! Everyone, like, he was statistically likely on a baseline to get his head cut off. And he yeah, didn't. every time. So. Every time you're like, oh, does Talleyrand have it this time? No, he did it again. So yeah, I can uh, really dream picks. of that charisma. Uh, <laughs> as for my favorite fascist, let's go on this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with a very conventional pick and go with uh, uh, Tojo from the um, Japanese one, purely because uh. out of oh no 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 out of all of the fascist leaders during World War II. He was the only one who could get his fucking ass reamed out by his lessers and do nothing about it because of how mm. fucked the Japanese government was during World War II. His, his admirals... Good? I mean, I find it funny. Imagine thinking you're top shit of the government and then this admiral comes in, says you should kill yourself, that you're useless, and then fucks off and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> so I like him because he got bullied the most out of all the World War II fascists. <laughs> Other so than happy maybe you, Mussolini. The I'm most so happy impotent. you came in on... So happy you came in on this question. This is real. This is my hole. It was made for me, energy. <laughs> I like the Junjito reference there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm yes. sure we're filling up some kind of Born Under Punches yeah. bingo card. Yeah, I'm sure there is <laughs> at this point. But at the risk well, of the free making space, your so. uh, co-host retreat from here and never talk to any of us again, I will move on to the game now, which only <laughs> has a... <laughs> Which is uh, less about weeb shit and more about the hidden city of Atlantis. Thank fuck. Beautiful. I know, right? Something so, we oh. know that is objectively true because Plato used it in an analogy once and people took it as fact. Is that where it came from? Yes, literally Plato was using it in one of his uh, writings. And he was using it. It's like, I, I have read Plato since university, so please excuse my ignorance, but... I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be some sort of like metaphor at some point. And uh, he, people are just like, ah, yes, Plato talking about a, an actual Greek island that sank. And we've just held on to that for 2,300 years or whatever. Wow. So, yeah. Okay. The moral yeah. of the story is that um, people need to read Greek literature with a bit more of a actual analysis eye. Are you he sure? Was, he, was, he was holding the lave of heaven and, you know, he laved it into being. I guess so. I guess so. Also, don't read Plato. He's super boring. Read Diogenes. He's way funnier. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. He's sick. Oh, yeah. Behold a man. All right. But yes. Anyways, I keep distracting us here. So let's get on to the... So the last time we were in our lost city of Atlantis here, um, the entire city had actually turned into a giant robot. And started exiting the sea. <laughs> Guys, I promise, this, this is a very serious story. Um, and in order to um, fight the president of Atlantis, who has turned the city into a giant robot to escape the sea, uh, the Atlantean Rangers, uh, patent pending, definitely not the Power Rangers, um, had assembled into their own giant robot to fight it. So that's where we're going to uh, resume here, after we get an introduction of all our characters. Now... I'm seeing a sort of like order based on clockwise of the uh, of the squares that aren't me. So uh, we're gonna start with uh, Kelly because it's too late for you to fix it, Kelly. Oh shit! I was <laughs> clicking on the wrong screen. <laughs> All right. So um, 
Yeah, I recently uh, came up with a new character, uh, an octopus named uh, Ellen Mollusk, because uh, my old character, uh, Smegma Gland, was a huge piece of shit racist. No idea how that happened. Um, but no, Ellen is great. Um, I roam the land helping strangers in need. Uh, my unique talents are my distributed nervous system, which, you know, allows me to, you know, my, my arms react before the, you know, head brain even does shit. We got no time for this. Uh, well, yeah, I have something in my inventory. Um, we have no time for it. Never mind. Uh, I'm done. That's me. Ellen Mollusk. One All part. right. So next we'll go with, was it, I'm terrible at names. The Lucas? Oh, uh, uh, Lucas. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, so my character is, I came up with this name. I woke up from like a weird dream one day with this in mind. Uh, Muldus Mulhew. Uh, he is an older man. He is a shoe polish salesman. Uh, he wears a brown linen suit with a white shirt and a sensible haircut. He frowns most of the time. Uh, he has an intimate knowledge of the production and colors of shoe polish. He can tell the difference between any shade of brown and black. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a very exciting person. Sounds right. Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> it's Mal Mal <laughs> Oh, God. In my head, All he right. was Australian. I have a voice in mind. It's not Dutch. Don't worry. It's not Dutch. All Let's right. Talk. It's not too late to give your character a Dutch accent as he, you know, points at people and distinguishes the various different shades of brown and black. Please don't. Oh the goodness. Dutch is already a joke of a language. Let's not make it more of one. No, Please don't make me do a type. Dutch accent. <laughs> Imagine a worse it German. Be, it would just be South African. <laughs> I could do an all right South African voice. Yeah. <laughs> all right, uh, Nicole, your character. Um. So I I need to. I definitely have been keeping up for the show, but for our viewers who don't know, did my character get killed off? Uh, I feel like yes it got killed off no. while I was gone. Okay. Can. Do you want to update our viewers on what happened there? Uh, oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, so <laughs> I'm Dr. not clear on what happened either. Look, uh, a storyteller doesn't reveal all the secrets and how he makes stuff work, and that's because we're lying most of the time. Um, so Dr. Gill died, um, but didn't, uh, before passing on his, um, his powers to his brother, his long-lost brother, who then... Abs absconded with a uh, another person. Look, words are hard, and I've already had two tall boys. Um, uh, with another person, and then rejected that, and so Doctor Gill came back to life, and um, before running off to try to shill his services in another area, tried to give like a chosen one speech to our last guest. <laughs> so as it stands, he is not in the giant robot. He is shilling his services somewhere in Atlantis. But with the power of rewrites, I'm sure we'll bring him back into the story. Perfect. I can't wait. This does not seem out of place in any comic I've read. This seems totally fine to me. Yeah, like, I mean, like, I still think it's better than Marvel. <laughs> Didn't Spider-Man become, like, Dr. Octopus at some point, and then actually his soul got put into a giant spider or some shit? Like, and these, this is from, like, the last 20 years or so, so... Yeah, so, so what I'm saying is Marvel yeah. should hire me for absurd amounts of money. Because <laughs> yes. I can write bullshit, too. Exactly. And finally, um, again, bad with names, please refresh me. I'm gonna... My name? No, yeah. no, 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 I want, I want him to guess. I want him to no, guess. No, no. I'm actually terribly <laughs> sexist. They didn't tell you about this all, and I just forget women's names immediately. <laughs> uh, uh, Josie. Josie, thank you. Um, I don't think I said that, actually. I don't think I'm sure someone said has said it, though, and my brain is just a void of terminal alcoholism, so... No, they, okay. they, they introduced us, but that was a, we've been doing, going for like an hour and a half now. I, I get that. Yeah. But uh, why don't you introduce your character for us? All right, so um, I'm Harold Holden. Um, Harold Holderman, Hol Holden is a white man with white gray hair, approximately 59 years old, who wears nothing but a black bathing suit. He is constantly moist and occasionally has a barnacle or crab hanging out on his skin. He's always wearing flippers in his inventory. He has a uh, spear fishing gun and um, he doesn't remember much about his past. Some say he looks eerily like the old Australian Prime Minister, Harold Holt, who went for a swim one day in the ocean and was never seen again. True story. Um, 
May I have five minutes to do a wee wee? You absolutely can, and I oh, can yeah, talk about how I think specifically I absolutely for fear that. you. Thank you, thank you Josie. <laughs> yeah, thank Here, you. we've got a... I'm got so a annoyed by that. how well Josie's character fits in this setting. Like, <laughs> I perfectly chose... <laughs> I chose this incredibly boring character, but I, I'm kind of happy he's in this setting, because, like, I'm happy to see how it goes, but, uh, yeah, I'm real jealous, Josie. But, yes, okay. we can take a five-minute washroom break. Uh, Kelly, I see, is just chomping at the bit to click on his graphic. So if you can do I don't that, know what you're talking about. I'm hands off the wheel. I don't know. Oh, you're you hands off the wheel. I don't even are know you? how to start uh, the interface. Am, I, am oh. I able to press pause? It's okay. We'll take care of it. And wow, look, we're almost all timing. back oh. here, so we don't need to <laughs> click on it again. No, I think I think the the real lesson here is that this this makes me look bad. Um, that we we just need a longer interpissin click. I think we do. I think we do. Uh, I'm gonna answer a few questions in the chat while we wait. Uh, can it be your favorite? fascist if they spend, uh, spent their entire career fucking up, I absolutely can do that because that makes them even funnier. And the only time you should say someone is your favorite fascist is when you're ready to make fun of them. Which is why, again, Mussolini is a great pick because boy howdy is he fun to make fun of because he was useless. It's very easy to make fun of. Like, didn't he have to like Photoshop? He tried to get like that photo of him like on a galloping horse, but it was like hosed and they had to use like early 40s era Photoshop to like, you know, brush the guy out. Also, but he had to—he he had to absolutely half-ass his actual march on Rome. Like, if you look at the march to Rome, he totally didn't do that. Everyone else did. They did the full march. He took a fucking train back to Rome so that he could be in the march when they finally got there, because he's a lazy piece of shit who didn't deserve any iota of powder he got. <laughs> yeah. Back. Mor yeah. The moral of the story is that make fun of every fascist because they hate it, and if you have an opportunity, punch them in the face. Yes. Not in Minecraft. Exactly. Legitimately punch them in the goddamn face. If people elect me as prime minister, I'm going to make it legal to punch fascists in the face. As it should be. Yep. Oh, sorry, I got a beer as well. Sorry, peer pressure. Also, yeah. everyone has to be gay. Yeah, I mean, more, I, more I, like I started beer drinking pressure, water right? because I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I should be deferential say? to people who, you know, it's 11 a.m. and then they're coming out with the beers. I'm like, all right. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I set precedent. Um, also, because I drink fancy beer, I forgot... That it's high percentage. Ah, okay. there you go. Yay. So you've given me time to prepare my South African accent. Um, so, you know, for, thank you for, for those. Oh, no. For so those playing for... at home. Oh, we just keep interrupting each other. It's fine. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, uh, there um... we go. <laughs> uh, for those playing at home, I'm drinking Aether Brewing, which is a Brisbane brewery. I'm drinking nice. their um, Pinot Grigio Sour. It's very, Ooh. very delicious. It's my favorite beer of all time. I um, have been keeping it for this special occasion. Wow. Well, so I'm a we, fan. Should we do like a quick can check or? Yeah, might as well. Might as well. Yeah, we you've got Kaiju Crush. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is, a, this is a lovely Kaiju Crush. Like it was mm -hmm. very boutique -y for a while. Now it's like just a nice, just considered like a very nice beer to have just like almost like a table beer kind of uh what? yeah it's it is one of the nicest beers i've had in my life um i'm so happy they've gone into sort of like mainstream production they're much cheaper now but uh yeah they're still really nice yeah sorry Got Josie, two... sorry i'm just noticing two old milwaukee's yeah yeah, yeah. so what i'm drinking old milwaukee because i'm poor as shit oh is that <laughs> a bad beer yeah, it's it is it's not the great best cheap beer like okay, of everything um, at the like the low like dollar a can price point. Dollar uh, a can? Well, like like a buck twenty five yeah, yeah. probably with all the things. Yeah. And this I is, am drinking old, old Milwaukee wait because Kelly keeps buying how cheap boxes American of it and beer is. Oh my leaving God, them in yeah. my fridge. Yeah, I figure. <laughs> sorry, I cut you off. You go first. No, no, sorry. Like, can you buy it at the supermarket? in canada or we don't have we don't no no we don't we you can't buy beer in a supermarket here we have dedicated liquor stores okay that's okay, the same so, as our so state yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I remember going to america and just like you know staying in airbnbs this was like back when i did game journalism and just being like oh there's just a whole aisle of beer i can just get my beer here that's beautiful so yeah it was yeah a good time. weird country yeah. we're very um, weird country last but I, not least I, here sorry, sorry. I cut oh, you yeah, off. i'm cutting everyone off today yeah, that looks shit. That looks awesome. Yeah. This that looks is shit. Uh, that looks, Pina looks like Colada the... Milkshake IPA from Rail Routes, New York Cowgirl. And apparently, I'm looking at the back because I have to right now. 
it is made for International Women's Day, so I'm just the best feminist oh, out here, I wow, guess. Oh, wow, what an ally. <laughs> without Ooh. even trying, without even trying, once again, I'm saving feminism. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> we really need you. I know, another it's, white it's, hero, it's heroes <laughs> like you that are driving the movement forward. <laughs> Thank you uh, for shattering the glass ceiling for me. I, really I know, right? It. Don't don't you guys worry. I'm willing to say whatever needs to be said so that you guys don't have to. <laughs> wow, what a guy! My wife, the... my wife also bought me sparkling water. So, uh, so oh, that's I so sweet. That well. That's that's that is nice. <laughs> okay, now that I'm done shit posting. Um, well, as you say in Australia, you know, quesadillas, quesabiers, casamia, quesosias. Mexican what? food is really popular here at the moment, so so you know that does kind of work. Yeah, this is also true. I've never done shit posting. Uh, I've been doing it in the captions the entire time. Um, so the last time, uh, we cut off our scene as a uh, barrage of missiles was headed towards the uh, the Power Rangers mech, for lack of a better term. I patent pending, um, and uh, we'll pick up the story right there. When the missiles strike the head of the mech, and there's a massive explosion. And when the smoke clears, you see the lone figure, our last guest, with their chest rent open, with gore spilling out of it. Oh no! I don't remember who our last guest was, but I'm very sad. A running bet is I kill every. I wasn't. Guest I wasn't the there time. to be clear. I, it's not that they were a forgettable person. I'm sure it was a great episode. I. I wasn't there. Um, but from the gore, as it drips from the body, two figures spring out like a certain Greek story, although not with blood. Um, and two figures stand up: a Harold Holden and a Moldus Mulhu. I'm, I'm gonna fuck up that name a hundred times. I guarantee. you. I'm really good at names, I promise. <laughs> no, that's fine. I it's yeah. a weird name, it's like a fever dream name, so yeah, sorry about that. Uh <laughs> I always appreciate fever dreams. So, uh that's the establishment for you guys getting written into this little story. But a little addum before we get going is a little what? Dr. Gill. Shut up, Kelly. <laughs> um Dr. Gill. As they uh, attempted to flee the scene, they hear they feel rumbling from the uh, the the Atlantis mech that they're on right now, and they look towards this giant Power Rangers mech that they have flown before, and they almost feel a pang of nostalgia, like they should be on that vessel. And now, from that moment of the missile striking and blowing up the head of the mech. We will begin with what does Ellen Mollusk think? Yeah, Ellen Mollusk is just so excited to contribute. Oh yeah, as usual, I can tell you were paying attention, you ADHD man. Mm-hmm. Could be yeah, me. so uh, <laughs> I exa- I examine my surroundings. That's, of course you do. <laughs> don't worry. At least sixty percent of this call has ADHD, so don't worry. Um, uh, <laughs> both in that man. <laughs> uh. So your surroundings are the mech is slouching forward as its central control system has been destroyed by the fact that sure. it has been broken up. Those eight levers that your eight tentacles were on while whilst you floated in whatever environment that room had, uh, even though you push those levers, they no longer respond to your controls. You see a glowing red switch above in the uh, frontal part of the cockpit. So our mech shut down. Yes. Didn't we punch them the off. fuck out? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, well, good thing you can't. God damn. All right. Uh, like, is there is there some sort of, like, obvious eject button? I mean, you're seeing a glowing red switch. Yeah, but that could be anything. That's a good question. What is it? <sighs> Only one way to find out, Kelly. And this, Do this it! Is a- this is a glowing red switch I didn't see when I first asked you to describe the cockpit, and you only told me there were four levers. Well, that's because it wasn't glowing red before. <laughs> is it one of the four levers, or it's a new switch? It's a new. It's a switch that just started glowing red. I, um, okay. So I use one of my arms to hit the switch. 
All right. And I use the other seven arms to like all simultaneously give the deuce to like, I don't know, just the, whatever direction the, the I'm general the God. <laughs> yeah. All right. So as you flick that switch, you hear a giant pneumatic hiss as the robot begins to disassemble into smaller crafts. Now, to draw in our new players here, Moldus and Harold, feeling fresh into this new environment, what do you guys feel? What, what, what the? F you hear explosions and all of a sudden you exist. What, what do you feel in this situation? <laughs> I feel moist. You feel moist. <laughs> understandable, understandable. And I promise you that will come into factors here. Wetter than usual? <laughs> all I know is wet. I don't <laughs> Uh, Mul Muldus is confused. He was attending a shoe polish convention in, in the Cairns Convention Center and is uh, baffled. <laughs> he, is, he has thoughts on the layout. He, he has strong feelings on how a convention center would look and uh, he want, would not have chosen to set it up this way. That's understandable. And I mean, I mean, I, I mean like the problem with Cairns is that like, it's, over, it's overshadowed by the film festival all the time. So the shoe, shoe shining festival uh, doesn't really get a whole lot of... Uh, a lot of prestige. Uh, just to be clear, I'm talking about the uh, northern Queensland city of Cairns, not not Cairns Film no. Festival. Oh, well, I mean, <laughs> would you guys stop Th copying is... the French? <laughs> Never. <laughs> it's, it's what there's, saying. there's better people to coffee. <laughs> Look, it also probably has film festivals, but uh, yeah, sorry. So we can say that yeah, the Shoe Polish Festival has overshadowed <laughs> the Cairns <laughs> Film Festival. <laughs> <laughs> Not related to the famous French film festival. <laughs> yeah. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> Which is real quick though, but how would you set up a convention center? We have time. Like, go, go, go be yeah, we have um, 17 minutes. Go. Uh, uh, look, uh, climate control. Um, lots of glass. Uh, lots of points of ingress and uh, lots of points of ingress and ingress. Uh, several sets of stairs to allow people up into the auditorium. Uh, I cannot see anything like that in this uh, current environment, uh, and I'm and I cannot see where all the shoe polish booths are. I have a lot I'm of feeling, business to do I'm, today. I'm feeling violent towards you, Moldus. <laughs> can, can can characters fight? Can PCs fight each other? They absolutely can. Okay, yeah, there's no Good. combat built into our rules, but there's been a surprising amount of violence in some of our games. So yeah, I, I've seen. I've seen Harold's stats, so I don't know how it's going to work out for old Maldus. <laughs> I, I'm just saying that uh, this is still less violent than the time someone used uh, ice cream scoop to take out someone's eyes. So Beautiful. Yes. Yeah, so uh, um, uh, Harold's just here. Uh, for context, Harold has plus two body and, like, minus everything else. Ah, yes, a classic. Makes you wonder why they uh, never appeared again after they went to the ocean. The answer is because the ocean is terrifying and we should stay away from it. <laughs> uh, because he belongs there. <laughs> Harold uh, Holt will be getting getting his own episode if Josie doesn't disband the podcast after this. <laughs> <laughs> We're just getting started. Uh, so yes, um, as you guys are sort of trying to get your own bearings, though, you guys also hear this pneumatic hiss. And as if you had appeared right where you needed to be, uh, two holes appear in the floor underneath you and drop you guys into your own little cramped, frankly a little too cramped, uh, cockpits that, um, with a mechanical voice announced that autopilot has been engaged. Autopilot? Mm. Autopilot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, all right, and then... Let's see. The problem is I was I, I forgot that Dr. Gill needed to be written back in there because I killed him and then unkilled him, but still wrote him out. I'll, so. I'll find my way in. Don't you worry about it. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Um, That's her pickup line. <laughs> I'll find my way in. Can <laughs> <laughs> someone Yo. ask Ryan how he's doing right now? I've been telling uh, her it's inappropriate, but... <laughs> <laughs> you guys, uh, the three of you, Maldus, Harold, and Ellen... Uh, have found themselves in some small pilotable crafts that eject from the giant robot and make their way towards the Atlantean mech, as I've now decided to call it. Um, 
on like said autopilot. You uh you grasp the controls and attempt to direct the craft, but it seems intent on going right after the main platform where the president of Atlantis seems to be standing so far. I do not uh, know what is happening. <laughs> so, well, I mean, but our craft is moving towards this thing on autopilot? Yes. Hey guys, great news. The the thing's doing itself. Let's just let's just see what happens. We'll ride out and see what happens. That's my vote. Also, I pushed one button and this happened. So I don't know. You know this, this is uh, <laughs> I I I don't want to dominate all the all the all the doing stuff. Oh, Moldus Mulder, right. settles down his briefcase and uh, nods. He is baffled, but he is willing to go along with it. I like uh, I like Moldus' style. You hear me flop up in my wet uh, swimsuit and my flippers, <laughs> and I say. What's all this then? Forgetting that I'm Australian. What's all this then? <laughs> uh, perfect. This gives us an opportunity for our first roll. Um, Harold, if you could re uh, roll 2d6s for your understanding. <laughs> uh, I got a 5 and a 1. A 5 and a 1, so 6 minus 1 is 5. So you're vaguely aware that you are in the ocean. That's and uh, you're vaguely aware that you're in the ocean, and that you should keep your flippers on because they might come in handy. Cool. All right. <laughs> That's where you're at. I, so far. I, I, I look at my flippers and just give a little little nod at them. <laughs> Perfect. That's all I do. <laughs> um, as the the crafts approach the platform, the Atlantean mech itself doesn't appear to be doing anything to stop your progress. In fact, it seems to have stopped even swimming towards the surface of the ocean and almost seems to be waiting for your crafts to land, which they do with a soft hiss and the pneumatic doors open up, allowing you onto the well-groomed, uh, almost artificial turf surface of the presidential mansion and lawn. Did you say I run? Uh, no, Lawn. <laughs> lawn. Oh. Oh, yes. Okay. yes, we're in Iran now. There's real <laughs> plot twists here. I was like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> could could Moldus uh, try and make sense of his surroundings at all? Uh, can you he, absolutely can. He... can. Uh, if you could roll 2d6s on your understanding. Uh, uh, yeah, you roll those. I'm, I'm trusting the honor system here. Okay, sorry, uh, that is a 6. Uh, a 6 plus... plus 1. So 7. So... You, whilst uh, landing on the, the craft, realize that, A, you are way over your head right now. You just wanted to sell some shoe polish. And B, um, whomever is ahead of you there, a well-dressed man with a bald head and a long, bushy beard, is a man of great importance to whatever area you have found yourself in. What, what, what kind of shoes is he wearing? He is wearing <laughs> light brown loafers, and due to your um, unique talent, you can tell that they've been polished with a very um, a very rare shoe polish that basically requires a person to be so important that they don't have to ever risk stepping in a puddle. Because what will happen is the shoe polish actually gets very sticky and can bind if made wet in some way. That's pretty Moldus risky stares. for the president of Atlantis. That you can tell he never has to be amongst the people because I guess, he can yeah. wear a shoe polish like that. Mm. Moldus understands immediately that this is an important person. If he can afford this particular shoe polish, which is ultra brown, the rarest brown of all. And he, <laughs> he says, my goodness, sir, why have you called me here today? To die. <laughs> 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 Sorry, your audio cut out. Could you just run that line again. one more time just so we have a clear <laughs> take on it? <laughs> oh, you got it. That <laughs> <laughs> feed's coming for just fine, Kelly. The, the, um, the, the, the tall man who Ellen recognizes as the president of Atlantis, even if Harold and Moldus don't, clears his throat and speaks in a gravelly tone, Atlantean Rangers. 
You have been a thorn in my side since the beginning. You were supposed to be a force that allowed me to control the people, control the chaos, to lower the real estate prices of Atlantean properties so that I could consolidate the property and sell it at a profit to American investors. But you just couldn't stand in line. <laughs> I am going back to my emerald mine. Oh fuck! Off. I'm glad. Sorry. I'm glad we have two Elon Musk shit posters here. So, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't want to interrupt. We were just supposed to keep talking. So, just to be clear, uh, I, Ellen Mollusk, one of the newest members of the Ranger team, would recognize the president of Atlantis, but not yes. Doctor Millet McGill. Not not Doctor Gillip McGrawfish, who has been around since the beginning. Well, Dr. Gillip um, has not entered our story yet because Nicole said they would insert themselves. Sorry, I was waiting for you to like pivot to me being there. Like to like, hey Nicole, what do you want to do? And then I was oh, I thought but you were that's gonna kick in the door. So oh, yeah. Dr. Gill, now's your chance I, to kick I in kick the door. I kick in the door. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought you were gonna unzip like the Pepsi Twist commercial and the actual <laughs> the president of Atlantis was gonna be revealed to be Dr. Gill the whole time. Wouldn't that have been a plot twist? I should have went with that. Uh, oh, well. That would have made so much sense. I'm such a monster. God, God damn could, it. Could she be in hiding somewhere in the shadows? Could she about to like ninja flip out? Well, that's, that's a good question. Um, uh, Dr. Gill, if you could re uh, roll a uh, body for me. Let's, let's right. find out how well you're hiding in a um, very suspicious bush that seems to be sitting in the middle of the lawn for no reason. Suspicious Bush is the name of my next erotica. <laughs> Kelly, can you roll for me? I did not grab dice because you said you had them. Oh, oh, I'll roll also, for you. Also, I just realized we don't have your dice cam in here, Kelly. Which is mm, it's in shame. there. I I'm watching with the I'm dice cam cool. user. I guarantee you, it's in there. Uh, I can't see it. Well, it's because you got those weird hipster glasses on. Ah, uh, yes. There we go. Perfect. Yeah, and now we can see the beautiful Australian flag in the background. Is is that the Australian flag? No, it's not. <laughs> Absolutely, it might as well be. <laughs> Basically, a, the same is it a people. Territory in flag? Uh, is it a New Zealand flag? Is it's that the definitely territory? a New? It's a New Zealand. Oh uh, wait, wait! Did you you flip your fucking dice. I saw that was a goddamn ten. <laughs> you fucking cheater! That was a four. I I had to. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a, you rolled a ten. I I I saw the die. So, okay. despite Kelly uh, Kelly's desire to cheat, I was just moving it onto the camera. <laughs> Dr. Gill got a 10, plus I don't actually know what your uh, your body uh, status is. Uh, it's a zero. It's zero? Okay, so yeah. 10. So, whilst talking to the president, the rest of the party can notice a bush comically shifting across the lawn, <laughs> but the president himself doesn't seem to notice. So, uh, Dr. Gill, if you will, you, you are in this suspicious bush, which is the name of my next Grease punk band. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I really wanted to kick in the door, so I'm going to sneak around to anywhere there's a door and kick it in from the other side. That's understand. So uh, I'm going to say that body roll is good enough that you you slide open a window to the presidential palace. <laughs> you sneak into it, shifting out of the bush as you do so. You work your way open to the front door, and with a loud bang that interrupts the president's frankly self-indulgent monologue, uh... <laughs> The door is kicked open, and Dr. Gil McGrawfish has arrived. How do you wish to introduce yourself? Did someone say exploiting citizens? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Dr. Gil. Uh, you may know me from, from the Dr. Gil show. Um, I'm, I'm here, to, here to get my nose into whatever business you're doing. I'm All here right. to Where's get it? real and get my hands dirty. Hey, Dr. Gill, it's great to meet you. Where, where's your accent from? <laughs> it is from the South. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's about accurate to fucking... That's right, South Africa. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, definitely. Um, so, now that the president has been interrupted, he seems particularly upset. And he turns around in a start, and... The other three members of the party, Ellen, Muldus, and Harold, this is your opportunity to do something, because he is distracted by this, frankly, obtuse, old, washed-up, wannabe psychologist 
that has stumbled into the plot. I'm I'm hearing old washed up, and I'm feeling attacked right now. <laughs> 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 Well, see, the thing is, washed up is actually a compliment in Atlantis. It's kind of their version of kind of like... <laughs> it, means it means you're an accepted new like, resident because hey, you've washed, washed up, up Thanks, into dude. town. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. all right then. <laughs> all right. If, if this is an opportunity to like possibly ambush the president, like Moldus probably has an idea of what he could do. Um, mm. uh, I'm not sure how actions work in your system, but uh, he would like to open his briefcase... Uh, take out the can of burnt umber shoe polish and lob it at the president's head. All right. All right. Perfect. So the way we don't have initiative or anything in this system because we want to keep it relatively simple. So I just like, if people shout out ideas, I just implement them in the best order possible. Mm -hmm. So in this instance, I'm going to say, as you're unbuckling your briefcase, Liz, let's, this gives our other two players on this side of the party an opportunity to do an action as well. Mm -hmm. So, but um, once they've done their actions, I'll get you to roll a body roll to see how well you throw it. Mm -hmm. And we'll go from there. So yes, Ellen and Harold, you see Moldus begin opening his briefcase whilst the president has turned around. Is there anything you want to do in the meantime? Well, Ellen's a bit frozen trying to link the jokes of like suspicious bush and throwing a shoe related object at someone's head. <laughs> so there's a bit um of like... There's a. Uh, I I feel like uh, Doctor Gill is probably going to have the uh, the initiative here. All right, and Harold, is there uh, anything you want to do whilst uh, waiting oh, sorry, for Moldus to open his briefcase? I have a spear gun. Sorry, you have a spear gun. That? You absolutely can. I am all for <laughs> ultra violence here. Because <laughs> uh, like I, my understanding is very low, and I'm feeling threatened. Someone just um, what I thought was an insult, um, old and washed up. So I'm just ready for violence. Perfect. Uh, let's. So you're gonna you're gonna take out the spear gun then? Yes. All right. Are you choosing to open fire right now, or are you just gonna yes. hold it? Okay. So, great. I will get you also to roll a body roll then, if you and Maltus could both roll body rolls. So that's just one d six. Two d sixes. Two d sixes. Yeah. Uh, I got a five. You got a five, uh, sorry, all right. Effective six with my body. But... Okay, perfect, uh, perfect. I got seven plus, I think, two. Uh, if I'm yeah, looking at your good. sheet correctly, yep, that's that's two. All right, so um, as Moldus throws the can of shoe polish, uh, Harold opens fire with the spear gun. The shoe polish can is struck by the spear, opening up, <laughs> the, opening up the, the polish, and as the uh, loud clang happens, the president turns around at a start, and his eyes are struck with <laughs> fresh shoe polish, covering uh, his eyes and blinding him. Uh, burnt umber, that is. Burnt amber shoe polish. <laughs> uh, umber. And he umber. is umber. Umber. My apologies. Have you never watched Bob Ross? What is wrong with you? Uh, it's well, Josh's <laughs> accent. He's got my the, uh, my he's childhood got the grand accent. He pronounces it amber. Uh, no, my, my childhood was lacking joy in every respect, so no Bob Ross alive. Allowed. <laughs> no, same. Um, uh, yeah, imagine having two channels for the first, like, 14 years of your life. It's great. Anyways, uh, the, the brown, uh, the, uh, umber shoe polish blinds the president, and he staggers back, his hands clawing at his eyes, trying to get the shoe polish out of it. He is completely staggered at this point. Now, Dr. Gill, you have no idea what the fuck is going on right now, but you see a, a fellow older gentleman in pain and easily taken advantage of. <laughs> what is your plan? Oh, boy. Um, well, first I look at the shoe polish and I go, damn, is that burnt number? <laughs> <laughs> the finest burnt umber shoe polish available in Australia. <laughs> I hate it so much. <laughs> mm. Um, and then I um, well, my my instincts to take advantage of anyone that is weakened really kick in now. So I I'm gonna try and kick out my leg and trip him. All as right, well. so I'll get you to roll a body roll there, uh, uh, Doctor Gill. 
Kelly, God, my man. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Kelly, have you taken your medication today? Oh, God, it shot off the edge. Okay, wait. <laughs> Roll it again. Roll it again. Yeah, so that's a seven. Uh, plus, you said you had one body, Nicole? It's zero. Zero, so a seven. Okay, so you stick out your well-polished shoe-laden foot with a very dark black shoe polish on it and trip mm -hmm. the president who falls flat on his ass and strikes his head on the well-groomed, well-maintained artificial turf that is his lawn and it causes a cerebral hemorrhage. Jesus Christ. And Will, with blood leaking out of his eyes and ears, you see him twitch a few times and die. Oh. Wow. Okay. Oh, oh, wow. Do I still get to take an action? You sure do, Kelly. What do you want to do now that you've seen this president die? Well, first I helpfully point out that well-polished shoe-laden foot is also some erotic I'm working on. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, oh, no. Ah, so, feet man, I see. I managed to very clandestinely, I'm sure no one noticed, uh, quickly look up whether mollusks uh, lay eggs or not. Oh, no. Uh, no, they do. Sarah when we need them. So, they do? Uh, yeah. Well, Maybe? Yeah. the very quick Googling says yes. So, yeah, I, I want to attempt to lay an egg. Okay. Uh, <laughs> does that just happen, wall. or do I have to... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna get, yeah, no, you, uh, you, Kelly, you roll a body, uh, to see if you can do this. All right. Um, and, uh, my... oh, sweet. The, all right. And the rest of you are, I'm gonna get you guys all to roll a psych roll right now. Do we get to yell, psych? You we can if you yell. want. Hell I am yes. <laughs> it's the uh, only oh, way to I'm do it. I'm not going to, I'm feeling embarrassed now, so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Kelly, I need you to roll I... my psych for me. All right, uh, so. I'm... Am I okay. Wait, who am I rolling first, Nicole or me? Well, Kelly, roll your body, and we'll we'll work our way through this. You know what? I have so many fucking things here. Uh, yeah, so dump out twenty of them. Well, I needed to get ones that weren't red. Fucking jeez, <laughs> fucking my favorite fascist is Josh. <laughs> Dice fascist. All right, so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do I'm gonna be red, and this uh this off white is going to be uh Nicole because she's quite tan. Well, I don't consider her white anymore. Well, uh, uh, based worry, on I've, Ukrainian I've history, I'm more post on likely to support the whites at this point. Oh, no. Does okay, so I'm just really rude to Nicole's Ukraine. What? Look, no one's no. a good person in the Russian Civil War. Let's let's face it here. How, how did this become the conversation? Jesus. Okay. Because I'm... So, I've been reading a lot about Ukraine since the war's been going on. Okay, well, I'm rolling my body and whatever Nicole's thing is. I'm plus two body. All right, so, so I, I see four. three out of four die here. Oh, uh, we're gonna get eight. We're gonna have to Ooh, work on okay. the base cam. Is that okay. a crit? Can we crit fail in this system, or? Uh, you better believe I'm doing a crit fail. <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry if I. <laughs> no, no, trust me. If I see snake eyes, that's chef's kiss levels of I can't wait. This is why so... I don't like playing with Josh because he pays attention and he will like he doesn't just breeze by me doing things like rolling yeah like 20s. lying about using a d20 to <laughs> get through that uh so um that's a psych roll for dr gill of eight plus i think your psych is two. Oh no 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 my psych is m minus one i love it because mm -hmm. i'm that, a very bad psychologist that checks out so you have seven um if Maldus and harold could also roll psych rolls here yeah i got five oh. You got five. I've, I got an, uh, uh, sorry, taking uh, modifiers into account two. Yeah, so. you got two. Okay. So, I forgot what my modifiers are, sorry. That's okay, because this is about to get a little... for you. Uh, for your psych, yes, negative one. Oh, I got zero. <laughs> what? what? How, well, how is that how? even possible? What? You, you would have, the lowest score you could have rolled is two. Right. Oh, no, sorry. I thought we were looking at, like, the character sheet. So I got yeah. five... And then Minus one. Five. Okay, yeah. So that's four. Mm -hmm. Am I no? I'm reading the wrong sheet right now. My God. Uh, yes, you have five. Yeah, um, I was like, am I? Do I no, I no, I'm just brain zero? damaged. Uh, okay. We're no, well same. Well machine. Yeah. Legitimately, but. Um. So, uh, five and two and seven. All right. So, uh, Doctor Gill, as 
Ellen squats down, realizes this is a good time to get a look away. Unfortunately, both Maldus and Harold are drawn and look on in abject horror as it appears Ellen is appear trying to lay an egg, but in the worst kind of biological mix-up, maybe some bad food the last day, they appear to be t taking a shit on the president's lawn. <laughs> right in front oh, of you that's a all. relief. I was worried I was going to experience some kind of, like, octopus hole pro prolapse, but this is much better. Oh, no. <laughs> so, you're watching... Has a Maldus has <laughs> yeah. a squid fact. <laughs> and that's, yeah. Maldus is going to say the squid fact. Oh, uh, sepia ink is, <laughs> comes from squid ink. <laughs> and he just really? says that the whole time. <laughs> just the whole time. Just <laughs> that's the, that's the one <laughs> sepia fact I know, is that it used to be extracted from squid ink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Incredible. Mm. Incredible. So Maldus just repeats that while he cries and screams. And... <laughs> As this random person appears to be just taking a random squid appears to be just taking a shit right in front of him. <laughs> he also appreciates that Elon <laughs> Ellen could be a good source of CP ink. So, so you know, he, he makes a little mental note there. So Ellen, upon finishing what you thought was an egg laying, you realize your mistake and do again to the utter failure. You are terminally embarrassed of what you have done right now. <laughs> oh, God, you guys, this is so... I thought I was going to be so funny and cool. I was going to lay an egg, and I was going to go egg him because he's kind of a fascist, and that's what you do. You hit him with an egg, and I just... Oh, I, I'm, I, I was here to help the team, and I really felt like I let the team down. I'm sorry, guys. I, I, I'm going to go behind the building and, and, and change my power suit. It's all, it's all inked up... Uh, <laughs> oh boy, I should have I should have worn I should have been the brown ranger. Or oh, that, no wait. What what color is my now, ink? A, a sepia is sort of like a dark brown. So mold I should have been the Maldus sepia ranger. <laughs> well, uh, well, Ellen. No, no, Sorry, no Maldus, you go first cuz you guys control the story, not me. So what is what is Maldus going to do in this situation? Maldus is looking for some kind of he's going to take the empty shoe polish tin of burnt umber and see if he can like <laughs> take some of the burnt umber. I don't know if you want to roll for that or not. Uh, so no, no, this, this, is, this is your unique talent, so you just you just go forward with it. Okay, yeah, yeah. So he collects some. Do you want me to roll? <laughs> no, no, no. You just okay. You yeah, say what's happening takes... right now. Oh yes, another fun addition to my collection. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it just gets better every time. <laughs> yeah. Got Indian there for a second. <laughs> no, no. Hindi. Sorry, my bad. Sorry. No, yep, yep, stop. I'll stop. There we go. There's there is uh there is a good move right there. So whilst uh Ellen is So are you saying whilst? Whilst What do you want me to say whilst? Can we get can we take a vote on whether or not it's pronounced whether it's pronounced whilst or whilst, or am I like the only one that thinks that it's whilst? I, I thought I it was just, whilst, but I thought it was I've a heard it either thing. way, so I take the one that feels more natural to me. West. And I will not be attacked while I'm GMing a game. Wild. You know what? Rocks fall, Dr. Wild. Guild dies. Wild. <laughs> That's fair. He deserves to die. I just assumed it was a Canadian thing. I was just like, no, I just I mean, cannot keep up with the way Josh pronounces things. There's just so many. It's not a winning uh, fight to go in. I will if it's not a Japanese it. word, he does not also, know how to pronounce it. <laughs> also, I'm like, I'm a hardliner. If you understand what they're saying, then you're an asshole if you correct them. Even though I'm silently judging the entire time. Silently <laughs> judge. I mean, I was about to say, as a white straight man, anytime I'm I'm proven to be wrong, I just triple down and pretend I'm not. <laughs> so <laughs> verifiable by many people in this audience, in fact. Yeah, it's like when I tell Josh that the light in his hallway pointing at the camera is too bright, and he goes out and gets brighter light bulbs for his hallway. <laughs> Just, just every time. <laughs> That's something I would do. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. I'm Jeez. a petty bitch. What can I say? Yeah, me uh, too. But anyways, uh, while while Ellen <laughs> is off changing their power suit, you, Doctor Gill, if you could roll an understanding, please. Which Kelly, means that's you. Roll. That's you, big guy. <sighs> Kelly, I should just oh, grab yeah. my own dice. It would probably. 
It'd probably be faster at this point. Yeah. Oh, so I have well, a, fine. a fine. modifier just... of plus two. Plus two on understanding. Okay. Not well, bad. I can only see one of those, Kelly. All right. So 13. Hey, I need a V-shaped yes. damn near I need a V-shaped receptacle Woo! for these dice. So, Dr. Gill, recalling his elective political science class he took in uh, his, uh, his, his, um, what, what is that called in America? County college? I don't know. I don't know American. Community, Community college? college? Community college. I don't know American things. I try to make it a policy not to. Um, it's such so, a different exotic country. <laughs> You realize from your uh, elective political science course in community college that if you kill the president with the strange libertarian laws of Atlantis, you actually become the president until the end of term. <laughs> Hell yeah, I'm going to be even worse. <laughs> so Dr. Gill what? realizes that he is now the president of Atlantis and he can set a new governmental system because Wait a boy, how do you our politics bad? Wait a minute. We all kind of helped kill the president. Maldus wants to know who really, you know, who? since we all killed the president, should we not all be president this, now? Should this not be a junta situation? Oh, we're going to have a junta going on here. I mean, I'm down with that. Do you because... really want Maldus to say junta? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Go on. I think we junta? should make... I think we should make a junta. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Because you see, my shoe polish hit him in the arse, and the spear gun opens shoe polish, and then Ellen did whatever the hell that was. So <laughs> I think we should become a haunter. <laughs> also, yeah, our own is just a hunter when you're wearing jeans. I would like the real estate prices to stay stable. <laughs> so my negative gearing credits go I, up. I don't know I, what negative gearing I, I, I hate how natural you're falling into this. <laughs> it's it is more South African as we go on. <laughs> and I'm really, I'm realizing I'm so racist towards white South Africans. You know what? <laughs> there, there are far worse people to be racist against than white yeah. South Africans. <laughs> There's far um, worse? I've known a few South Africans. Most of them are lovely. Um, sure. One of them, however... One of them, however, did jujitsu with me and was like real intense. Okay, Would just like throw you I across the damn room. This is where I could tell that you're you were like richer than me growing up because all the white South Africans I've met are cunts. I played so, rugby oh, with yeah, one. Yeah. He was all right. Uh, he had no ears because of playing rugby so much. But <gasps> they don't they what? don't wear they don't wear scrum caps a lot of the time. Okay, it's kind of metal, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah he's okay. alright, he's good to drink with. I didn't get into his politics, so he could have been a piece of shit. This is like almost ten years ago now. I love the apartheid. Please, no. <laughs> no but as the new junta here, you guys get to establish what Atlantis does next. Are they going to rejoin the rest of the world? Or are they going to recede back into the ocean with stable property prices? Stable property prices, please. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I got an investment. I, I got a game plan for when the shoe polish industry eventually collapses. Whereas uh, me as Harold Hol Harold Holden, um, I want to spread the joy of the Holden Commodore um, <laughs> to the rest of the world. So I vote not going back under the sea. Okay, so we've got one for, one against. Uh, we have our tiebreaker, Dr. Gil McCrawfish. Okay, how do we have one for, one against when there's three of them? Because Dr. Gil hasn't voted yet. Yeah, yeah, breaker. it's a tiebreaker, mm. the decider. Oh gosh, I just, I just want to go with what the group wants, so I think Dr. Gil should vote. Which is what was happening because Ellen didn't actually do anything to kill the president. So that's right, Ellen's I didn't. Part I, of the I, I don't really. The hunter. I had yeah. a whole just plan. It didn't work out, corpse. but that's okay. I'm just here to be part of the team. Yeah. Uh, we could even call this the third triumvirate for <laughs> like two Roman fans in the audience. So tally redheads in the in the crowd. Oh yeah. Uh, so, anyways, yeah, Doctor Gill. What does Doctor Gill want? So Doctor Gill says, "As a good Southern man, I." Uh, I always, uh, I always say you gotta know when to hold in. So I'm gonna go with Harold in this one. 
<laughs> so, concede... Amazing. <laughs> I love that. So I'll concede on the condition I'll get to continue to milk this squid person, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'll back to it now. Does the junta wish to vote on the fact that uh, Ellen will be subjected to indentured servitude to Moldus Molu? Oh, look, well, it's more of a great. job yeah, offer. Let's vote for that. I think I think I've made it clear I have no problem with indentured servitude. <laughs> <laughs> if, you've been, if you've been following the storyline at all, that's that is not a problem for me. I yeah, am Doctor Gill has done some real fucked up shit this entire story. I am an absolute monster. Oh no. <laughs> so uh, yes. Yeah. Is Ellen Mollusk in a Dobby-like situation right now? Oh, God. Just waiting for that sock. No, I'm not like Dobby because I don't want a sock. I just love helping people. It's going to be so much fun. Oh, boy. Let's <laughs> oh, execute boy, that your is agenda. Dobby. Jesus Christ. Let's Whoa. execute your agenda, Dr. Gill. What's, what is you? What is it? I think it's time for your first speech as the, uh, as the, as the new junta leader. What's, what are we going to do? <laughs> what's, what's the big plan? You know, I think as president, my first... Yep, there it is. <laughs> oh! I know what happened! What?